everyone's here. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone and uh, our guest Enzo Davidis. Uh, j just uh, a reminder that we're on Zoom and if you're not uh, uh, speaking it always works best if you are on mute. Okay, I'd like to uh, Read the note to, to the members of the public due to the efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 and protect all individuals. The council chambers will not be open to the public to attend council meetings until further notice. Public comments may, uh, the public may submit comments for matters that are on the agenda to uh, jsshime at westlincoln.ca by June 15, 2020 before 4.30. Please specify if you want your comments read into the public record or if they are to be circulated to members of council for their information. The meeting will be recorded and available on the township's website within 48 hours of the meeting. So welcome to this uh, special council meeting on this Tuesday, June 16 at 11 a.m. At this point, I'm going to ask, are there any disclosures of pecuniary and or conflict of interest? Council Trombetta? Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I I'm going to challenge the chair here. I feel that you didn't call this meeting nor do I think that you uh, have earned your right to chair this meeting at this moment. So I'm going to put forward that I challenge the chair to uh, not hold this meeting and uh, I request that the deputy chair takes your place at this moment. I'll support that motion. Uh, I'm going to go to the clerk uh, for uh, uh, some clarification on that. Uh, usually a challenge is uh, done for the purposes of uh, ruling that the chair has made. Um, but Mr. Yeah. Mayor, under uh, our procedural bylaw, section 5.3, if you're gonna take any part in the debate, uh, that's gonna be more than just a, a brief comment. Uh, you do have to step down from the chair and that would appoint automatically the acting uh, deputy mayor. Well, we can do that at that time. I'm a little confused because in speaking to uh, Madam Clerk, she indicated that she was going to initially start this meeting and she was going to ask for a chair. Um, I think that was if, uh, I'm pretty sure that probably would have been if Dave didn't show up. Madam Clerk, can you uh, provide some clarity on this? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so a challenge can be made for a point of order. Um, a point of order is usually something that is in the procedure bylaw that is uh, not being followed. Um, in regards to the procedure bylaw, the, the mayor is the chair of the council meeting. However, if it's challenged, then it can go to a vote. And, um, and depending on what the vote is, then the mayor can be removed from the agenda, from the chair. From what I understand, I did get legal uh, legal advice yesterday, and that's what I was told to do. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'd like to uh, call the vote, please. Okay. Um, then uh, I'd like a recorded vote. Madam Clerk, you take up the, cl the vote then. No problem. Okay. Councillor Cody? Support. Councillor Ganan? Support. Councillor Donker? Do not support. Councillor Rayner? Support. Councillor Riley? Support. Councillor Trombetta? Support. Mayor Bosma? Opposed. The vote is five to two in favor. Carried. Therefore, based on the procedural bylaw, the acting mayor would step in as chair unless she um, is refusing to, then we have to pass a resolution to uh, adopt, uh, appoint a presiding officer. Uh, acting, acting mayor? Are you accepting the chair? I'm prepared to chair. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Ganan will be chairing the meeting. Thank you, sir. 
So moving forward um, in this meeting, I would first of all like to say that I did not support having this meeting. Uh, I'm sorry that it's come to this. Um, however, this seems to be the only way to um, have this council deal with this issue. And so um, I'm saddened by the fact that we're here. But um, before we move on, I would just like to remind councillors that we do have a policy that we voted in as soon as we were all elected, saying that we committed to treating each other with respect and that we weren't going to uh, make each other look good or bad and that we would be doing our very best among the other points there to represent our whole community. And so I think that before we get started, we just need to um, just remember that that was a policy that we put in place before we um, get into today's proceedings. So Madam Clerk, um, the next area was to request to address items on the agenda. And I know there are a great many uh, requests to have um, perspectives um, put on the minutes today of this meeting so that we have a, a public record of what people feel about what's going on. I'm going to turn that over to you to see what we're going to do about that. Thank you, uh, Acting Chair Gannant. Um, with respect to the request to address items on the agenda, on the agenda uh, yes, we have received a number of requests to, to include uh, comments. Um, there is at least, I would think, I, I think there is nine or 10 letters. There are 17 pages of continuous emails. We try to upload it. That's how large the document is right now. Um, it's too large to upload to the agenda, uh, so we cannot do that, which we were really hoping we could do. Um, if we are to read all of these comments into the record, it is going to uh, for sure go past, I'm sure, one hour, which is what the allotted time frame is as per our procedural bylaw to um, address items on the agenda. So I am, um, and, and for me to pick and choose, obviously I am not prepared to do that. Uh, or we cut it off at one hour. Again, um, I'm not sure what emails would be cut off. So uh, I look to council as to how they would like to proceed with this. Uh, we can get these out, but it will take some time. It's just uh, something that we cannot do at this moment. Councillor Riley, did you want to speak to that? Did you have some a suggestion? Yeah, so I, just a question, I guess, to you, uh, Madam Chair, to the clerk. Um, that, that allotted hour, is there any way council could vote to extend that, or is that something that we have to stay within? Uh, um, you know, last thing we want to do is make it sound like we're um, oppressing voices, considering you know, the nature of our conversation here. Yes, it can be extended. If you, uh, like I said, I don't, I, I'm not a, I cannot uh, determine if it's going to pass an hour, but based on what I, it looks like to, like here right now, it is going to be um, taking quite a while to read these through, I believe. Okay, so thank yes, you. We, but the, the short, short answer is yes, we can extend the hour. Okay, so any further thoughts uh, from other councillors as to how you want the clerk to proceed with this? Councillor Cody? I have in the past made it pretty clear that I'm not in support of emails being read out. However, uh, based on the town's instructions in our tweet, I did personally um, suggest citizens to, to some citizens that they email the clerk to have their record, to have their comment be read as per the town's instructions. So like I have to, it would be dishonest of me to now be against um, reading those in when the town released a statement saying we should and I specifically told citizens that if they want to be heard they need to contact the clerk so it's I, I would have to if we're gonna have a vote I would have to support reading them uh, just for just out of honesty and transparency madam clerk I'm, I'm coming back to you because it did say when the uh, meeting agenda was published that they had to be in by 4.30 on June 15th. I know that they were still coming in as of last night and this morning. Uh, does that help in any way to look at what the time frame was that was actually posted? In, uh, to, I'm sorry, through you, um, uh, Acting Chair Ganan, um, I did cut off uh, as of last night the emails. Those one, they were 
emails that did come in this morning, maybe even late last night, those were sent to you. I, they are not part of the record uh, that are that would be read into the, the minutes today. So that it was cut off last night when I, I was working until after 4.30 to try and compile these uh, emails. There was also some emails that did not include um, last names, um, I know that some members of council had concern that they didn't include addresses, but that um, because we have been accepting them by email, in most cases, uh, most of the emails that came in did not include addresses of, of uh, the people that wrote the emails. So therefore, I don't know where they live, if they are members of the community or um, not members. So, but. Uh, I did exclude the ones that didn't give me their last names either. So only their first names. So we're down to, like I said, about 17 pages of continuous emails and about 10 letters. Okay, so I see that, that our CAO would like to speak. So Madam CAO, did you have something to add to this? And thank you very much, Acting Chair Ganan. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to just state the fact that when you're thinking about this, one thing that we are, will endeavor to do is ensure that they are included as part of the agenda and the record. I think what I'm hearing is that staff are having difficulty with the file size. So they could be broken into, for example, three files and get included at some point in time. And that's all I want to say. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cody, one more thing? Yeah, I just, um, do we have any sort of uh, ability to if an email includes something that we would not allow a person to continue speaking about if they were standing in front of us at council, can we stop Joanne and then request that email be uh, no not continued based on derogatory, discriminatory content, like anything we wouldn't allow, we wouldn't allow someone to continue speaking about if they were standing in council chambers. Okay, I imagine that'd be a point of order, wouldn't it, Madam Chair? Although, you know, under, under our procedural uh, bylaws, we are also not supposed to hear repeated over and over. If, if the point has been made, the point has been made. And so I think what our clerk is telling us is that points of various sorts have been made over and over and over again. Um, and obviously this is a very divisive issue in this community based on the way things have gone in the last couple of weeks. So I think that, um, I think that we have to, we've now taken a big chunk of this time from this meeting um, discussing whether or not we should read them in. So I think as long as they are part of the public record um, and that people know that they have been read by all of us and listened to, if it's been a phone call or whatever has gone on, then I think um, that the clerk is, can probably make a decision based on, on what's best for this particular meeting because we do have a guest and we do have some further discussion. So I think we're all aware that there are many sides to this issue. So um, Madam Clerk, I think that probably the final decision is based on the practicalities of making this work. Thank you. I will look for any other direction if you'd like, but I guess it will take some time. Okay. Like Councillor Rayner would like to say something and I see you Councillor Trombetta. Yes, it's just that uh, the copy of the memo I received, it said, um, Please, uh, the public may submit comments for matters on the agenda uh, if you want your comments read into the record. Um, so if there's indications in any of those 17 pages that they want it read into the record, then I do believe we have an obligation at this time to read them publicly into the record because that's what we told the people we would do if that's what they wished. Or if they only wished to have them circulated to members of council for their information, that was the other option. So. I'm wondering if our, our clerk has has um, those letters specifically stating which option those people want and therefore segregate those 17 pages and maybe there's less pages to read. I don't know, but we did say that we would read it into the public record, which means we'd have to do it now. Okay, Councillor Trombetta. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. I, I just, uh, I would, uh, Councillor Rayner, uh, made some valid points. I didn't think really think of that. So my, yeah, my thing was just to because uh, uh, to accept it as the record. But if that does make a point of because uh, it changed what I was going to say that if they said that they wanted to read it, then they're able to read it. But I don't know if the clerk has went through everything and and uh, and, and you know kind of distinguish if there's 17 pages 
at this point, then I, I, I would like to, uh, if they are said that they're read, read them. If not, then uh, again, then uh, uh, I would just like to hold it. It's public knowledge. It's going to be in the record. So uh, it's not that uh, these, these emails are not going to, not going to show to the public. So uh, to me, it doesn't matter. It's a will of council. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Riley. I just, I'll just make one quick comment. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's tricky because, you know, that's what was communicated on Friday. And, uh, and so I guess now the question is, is just including them into the public record um, going to be perceived as the same as being read? I, I kind of on the fence about it now than I was before. Originally, I definitely would have said, like, just read it and we just muscle through it. Um, yeah. I, Again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this real quickly too. I'm kind of surprised that we're, we're, we were even doing that considering the nature of this whole meeting was to actually address the Pride Niagara communications and Westlake and flag raising and that the, everything else just kind of got included. So I think that kind of made it difficult to begin with, with the, in, I guess the getting any data with messages, but maybe we could just take a, a toll of how many people feel that they've read all the emails and are confident that they understand what's been communicated because everything's been shared with us so far, if I'm understanding correctly, or anything that hasn't been shared. Okay. So anything that hasn't been shared, um, maybe we can take into consideration of uh, being read. I don't know. I'm just coming up with an idea here, but for the most part, if it's going to be public record, um, it's not like it's not going to exist. And we're all, I think have been com uh, communicated back and forth. Uh, quite a bit, so I feel like we could probably speed this up too. So I, I'm open to ideas. So can we take a quick, um, a quick straw vote, almost in terms of the direction we want to give the clerk? Obviously, she's prepared to read if need be. It makes, it makes it very awkward because there will be some things that she will have to edit along the way. And um, what's the general feeling? We need to move this meeting as well. I just want to, sorry. Uh, acting Mayor, and I just want to make it to note it that when we uh, produce the agenda, obviously there is a section in there to request to address items on the agenda. Um, when this item came up and we included that and sent that out on Friday, we had no idea that we would have received the overwhelming response that we have um, with the number of emails. Uh, you know, we worked, um, I worked on these emails pretty well for part of Friday night uh, and, and Monday trying to put together and even this morning just making sure we have it right. Uh, but you did not receive all of the emails. The only ones that you did receive are the ones that they to share with members of council and not include as a public record. So the, the rest of the emails are with me right now. And as I see it, there is quite a large number of them to read into the record. I have no problem reading them into the record if that is the wish of council, but it will take some time. That's all. Okay, so um, do we have a, some kind of a recommendation as to which direction we take? Well, like I say, my feelings is that we, in black and white here, said please specify if you want your comments read in the public record. So we're telling the people that if they do send something, and they don't want it just to go for information to a member of council that we have to read it. Had we not have put that in writing, then I would say we were fine to, to not go through the whole thing. But we basically said we were going to, regardless of the volume, and I know the volume has changed the situation a lot here, but we had opened the door and the floodgates came in and we have an obligation to read it because that's what we stated. So it, it again, it doesn't make us look good or staff look good to tell the public what we'll do and then all of a sudden because we get inundated we do a 180. Um, that's okay. kind of my feeling on it. Okay so you said that Councilor Riley one more time and then we're going to make a decision. So. Okay. I'm going to bring the motion forward that everything because of the, the, the position the town made on uh, the comments uh, the information shared by the town on Friday was that they would be read into the record. My motion is that all comments that have been received at the 430 on June 15 be read into the record. I think I think that probably that's accurate. Do we have somebody to second that? I will second that. Okay. All those in favor of reading into the record things that were sorry, 
let me just start again because I saw a hand come up. I didn't know Mary right. whether you wanted to speak or not before I got finished. So, okay. So I, the recommendation then is that anything that came prior to the deadline as published on Friday and, and they were received in time that we, we do in fact hear those today as quickly as our clerk is able to kind of go through. She can, at, at, I think at her discretion has to be part of that motion. So all those in favor. Okay, any opposed? Okay, Madam Clerk, do your best. And maybe, I, I think perhaps that if you wish, they could be shared with, with our CAO if she also has access to those. So either of you can do that however you wish, but I think that we'll proceed from there. So thank you. Thank you, Acting, <laughs> thank you, Acting Mayor. Okay, first, uh, first is a letter. Dear Mayor Balsman Council, after this meeting, I invite council and our community to watch a beautiful 47 second video on Facebook from our mayor addressing our community posted on April 9th, 2020 at 4.06 p.m. The message is entitled, What is Most Important to Me? This bracket Easter weekend. You'll note that 100% of the feedback was positive. It was shared multiple times and viewed over 1,200 times. His personal message was welcomed by our community. No special meeting required. He raised a flag that day, speaking to share a part of himself with the community, to share something has, has meaning to him, something he values, part of his identity, so to speak. It was received and welcomed by the community. Special, no special meeting required. No policies, no procedures, no clerks or council discussion. No special meeting required. Did our mayor truly raise a flag that day? No, not really. However, his 47 second message was heard over 1200 times. He didn't need a flag to get the attention of his community because they were already listening without uh, judgment, without protest. Pride Niagara reached out to West Lincoln for support via email on April 23rd, 2020 and again on May 18, 2020. Our mayor recalls seeing those emails in his discussions with Matt Holmes. However, as he expressed, expresses in the interview and through this, his correspondence with our concerned counselor, he was overwhelmed by the burden of spam emails and dealing with an ongoing pandemic. He saw them, but they had slipped through the cracks. Perhaps had our council had our mayor flagged those emails for attention, it would have served as a reminder that there were items needing his review. Not only did those items need his review, but in order for him to have his review and that of council, there were special protocols in place. In his words to his fellow councillors, Pride Niagara can make the request to West, Lin West Lincoln and there is a protocol for the process outlined by the CAO. Pride Niagara would need to make their request again. They would need to make the request to West Lincoln this time. If that statement leaves you confused, you are not alone. The date was missed. Flags were flown all across Niagara and videos of support were shared and celebrated. Meanwhile, the voices of West Lincoln were silent. We had put our trust that our mayor and council would be our voice in times like these. However, our voices had slipped through the cracks. A special meeting was requested so that they may be heard, but it's not supported by our mayor. After all, why should a flag get a special meeting? Why was a special meeting required? Council pushed forward on our behalf. Our voices would be heard in a special meeting on June 16th. On June 11th, 2020, our mayor accepted an interview with Matt Holmes of iHeart Radio an interview where he shared his views and his politics while representing West Lincoln. Some of our voices were heard and shared, but only those that supported his views. Some of our voices or chatter, as our mayor had described it, had also been present in the dialogue that week, but they would not be shared that day. Our voices would have to wait until June 16th at 11 a.m. The interview our mayor gave where he shared his, his views and his politics had lasted 29 minutes and 43 seconds. No special meeting required. 
Pride Niagara had made a, a request on May 18, 2020, a request for a 30 to 60 second video of support and a symbolic raising of the flag. No request had been made to hold up the flag or any given length of time. Merely a 30 second video would suffice. We are now here today at this special meeting wondering just how special our voices really are. Before we, before we needed this special meeting or more accurately this emergency meeting to flag down our mayors and our council's attention. This is after all what flags are for. So in the words, in the mayor's words, what they are still fighting for, we are fighting for a day then when acceptance and equal opportunity to be heard is met with no special meeting required. Until then, please continue to leave this, this item flagged for your attention. With kind regards, Jennifer Fox. The next letter, your esteemed councillors and mayors, First of all, I'd like to thank you for all your hard work each and every day to make West Lincoln a safe and peaceful community. This is not an easy or light task, especially in past months with our province and country in a state of emergency due to COVID-19. In recent days, there has been a heavy push for our community, from the community for our municipal offices, our municipal halls in West Lincoln to fly a pride flag for the LGBTQIA plus community. I would like to present several arguments opposed to this. The flag is a defining symbol of what makes you different from everyone else. Having a national flag is important because this means that you are not ruled by any other country. It makes you unique. It makes everyone in that country united under the nation's authority and law. Canada is a free, equal, and diverse society. This is, this is what makes us unique. We have freedoms and equalities that make countries around the, world, around the world do not have. We have the diversity that most countries only dream of obtaining. We as Canadians should be truly proud to be of Canada. I am not gay, but that does not mean I am less any less Canadian and any less accepted and protected under the Canadian law and rule. A person from the LGBTQIA plus community can stay the same. Not, they are not less Canadian and they and are not less accepted and protected under Canadian law and rule. They and I are on equal footing in our government's eyes. They are not, not above the law of Canada, but rather we are united under that law. This is why we submit to their to being under the Canadian flag. To lower the Canadian flag is a demeaning act to all Canadians and all Canada stands for. To claim that one community rises above the rest of Canada is to therefore lower the importance of all other Canadians who do not fall under that category. Every Canadian who is not a member of the gay community need not feel bigoted and hated by them and made to live under their flag. The LTBTQIA plus community cannot think they assert to our government's rules over all Canadians by raising their flags above Canada's flag. The same is true for our province and our municipal flags. The rule of the of the, of the municipal government is to adhere to laws and rules given by our federal and provincial government. The federal government fights for all minority groups in Canada to be equal and free through law. The municipal government is to be nonpartisan when it comes to political issues. I advocate that it remains so. The municipal council serves the community best when it focuses solely on the tasks that the provincial government requires of it i.e. financial allocations, bylaw enforcement, maintenance of roads, parks, community buildings, etc. We are all united with our pride for Canada above all else. We accept we have differences and yet we stand strong together, strong in freedom, strong in equality, strong in diversity. We are not all part of the LTBTQIA plus community. 
we are all part of West Lincoln community in Canada. Please let's remain strong and live peacefully under that one flag, the red, white, Canadian maple leaf flag. Warmest regards, Esther DeBoer. Now that uh, letter was a part of a petition that was signed by, a, at this point, was 825 individuals. Um, sorry, a total of supporters is at 825 of mainly our local signatures. Some signatures report that they are from outside of West Lincoln when I know they are not. And I think this is due to either their website provider or the fact that they haven't updated their social media accounts to reflect their new living locally. The next letter, good day, council members and residents of West Lincoln. I'm a resident of West Lincoln and a citizen of Canada by birth. I would like to address you today on the topic of what flag should be flying in, at our municipal office. Canada is a country made of many different individuals who have many different ways of identifying themselves. As well, no single individual identifies themselves in, any, in only one way. Individuals identify themselves by gender, by occupation, by age, by ability, by country of origin, or country of family heritage, by religious beliefs, by sexual orientations, by sorry, personal preferences, and the list goes could go on. Each individual who lives in this country experiences life in a different way, and some citizens of Canada suffer in ways that others do not. Is an individual who suffers an injustice more valuable than one who does not? Is an individual who suffers the loss of a loved one more valuable than one who suffers the loss of a job? Is an individual who has suffered financial success more valuable than one who is, who is poor? Is a black individual more valuable than a white individual? Is a homosexual more valuable than a heterosexual? Is a Muslim more valuable than a Christian? No matter how one identifies ourselves, we can all agree that one person is no is more valuable than another if no one person is more valuable than no one no one group of first people or more valuable than any than another no matter how one identifies oneself we all deserve to be treated with respect we all deserve to have access to food, shelter, clothes, free speech, own property, experience, education, hold a job. We deserve to direct our lives, choose who we will love and who will be friends, who will be our friends. When we get sick, we deserve to receive treatment. If we are beaten or murdered, sexually assaulted or physically assaulted, we deserve to have the people responsible held accountable for their actions. If any of these are withheld, then injustice occurs and justice must correct the injustice. No matter how the individual involved identifies themselves, these are a person's right and no other person or group of people have the right to, I, to de deny another person or group of people these things. These are the rights of Martin Luther fought so hard for black people to achieve. These are the rights women fought so hard to receive, and these are the rights that the LGBTQ community has fought to obtain. This is what the world fought for during World War I and II. No matter how many ways an individual identifies themselves, we all have one thing in common. We are citizens of Canada. We should be standing united as Canadians under the Canadian flag. A municipal office, a government office, should be uniting all the individuals who make up our country under this one flag. If it, is, if it does not and shows special treatment of one group of individuals over another, then it does not promote unity, but rather highlights our differences. You are saying that this group is more valuable than any other, and this becomes the very injustice you attempt to remove in the first place. As a resident of West Lincoln, as a citizen of Canada, I want to promote unity and thus want only the Canadian flag to, to fly on the pole of our municipal government office. 
No other flag belongs upon this particular pole. I say shame on any other government office for flying any other flag than a Canadian flag. Thank you for your time. Lisa Jensen. Next is another letter from Margaret Fisk of Smithville. Esteemed members of council, there appears to be discussion about whether or not to raise the flag, raise the LGBTQ flag on by the official West Lincoln Town Hall building every year in June. I appreciate the fact that West Lincoln, instead of just making the decision yes or no, gives members of the community the opportunity to give their input on the matter. Thank you for this. Canada prides itself in being multicultural, anti-racist, and promoting gender equality. Whether you are of Indigenous, Polish, Filipino, Dutch, or any other background, whether you have black, brown, white, or any other color skin, whether you are an atheist, Christian, Muslim, or any other non-faith, whether you are male or female, hetero, hetero, homosexual, transgender, or any other gender, there is no inequality under the Canadian law. The issue at hand, once a year in June, on by many government buildings, we see the rainbow flag, the flag from the LGBTQ community. Not so in West Lincoln, and people are complaining about that. Is West Lincoln biased against the LGBTQ community? Should West Lincoln follow suit and raise the flag every year to show their support? At least I think that is the reason. I would like to give you some food for thought when when meet to discuss this issue. Going back to Canada, going back to the Canada prides itself in paragraph. If you would do this, where is the end? There is no inequality in Canada between any, and that is a long list of people of which the LGBTQ community is an equal part, no more or less important. What happens at the church's call for a worldwide day of prayer for the unborn child? Is there going to be a sign against abortion in, in the front lawn of the township building? Because the Christian community is a large part of West Lincoln. And this issue is very important to them. Do you, right now, display signs in support of the Black community, in support of their struggles, the Christian community, the Black community, all equal with the LGBTQ community? I suppose you would agree that all these things are for people to do personally, not for the township to pick up and choose. That is asking for trouble, right? Should not township show what we are, what we all are. Citizen residents of Canada, Ontario, West Lincoln, in that we are one and equal, and we may be found to show that. Suggestion, would it be possible to designate, for instance, a piece of land of a section of the town where the people can display signs, hang flags, certain, since certain rules would have to apply, it would, probably have to go through township. This is a void for an instant extremist flag signs or too many flag signs for one cause. I wish you a lot of strength in your respective offices with all of the different decisions which have to be made. God bless. Respectfully, Margaret Risk. Next letter. Dear members of council, I'm writing in support of the Township of West Lincoln raising the Pride flag as requested by Pride Niagara. The Pride Niagara flag is flown by companies, institutions, municipalities, organizations across Canada as a symbol of diversity and inclusion. By flying a Pride flag, the municipality would be signaling a commitment to creating a safe, equitable, and welcoming township for everyone. The colors of the Pride flag each have a meaning. Red is life. Orange is healing, yellow is sunlight, green is nature, blue is serenity, and violet is spirit. Life, healing, sunlight, nature, serenity, and spirit, diversity and inclusion, safety, equality, and welcoming. What beautiful word con concepts the end actions to have associated with our township. The township has previously flown flags for community groups. Some I can recall are autism, autism awareness flag, 
in Crime Stalker's leg, and on June 1st, Mayor Bailsman himself raised the H. Bramley flag. I'm not sure the process by which those flags came to be flown. If they also be, if they also came before council or were subject to special meeting, but to raise those flags and then not raise the flag flag, flag sorry, would be a direct statement of intolerance and exclusion. I understand that the request from Pride Niagara is to raise the flag next year on June 1st, 2021. In addition to the township sending some virtual support on social media, However, given that the flag wasn't flown this year due to an error and a lack of action on part of the West Lincoln Council member the, that Pride Niagara had reached out to, I think Council should approve the Pride, Pride flag being flown for the remainder of this June in addition to flying the flag in, 2020, in June 2021. Again, to do anything less would be direct statement of intolerance and exclusion and reflect poorly on the Township of West Lincoln. I have resided in the township for almost seven years and my husband and I consider moving here to be one of the best decisions we have ever made. We all know that West Lincoln is a fantastic place to live, full of welcoming, friendly, inclusive people. Let's raise that pride flag and make sure everyone else knows it too. Sincerely, Stephanie. Uh, sorry. Guide. Good. I don't know. <laughs> I can't, sorry. Can't figure out how to say the last name. The next letter is uh, written by Jason and Jennifer Hemskirk. Hemskirk. Uh, councillors and Mayor of West Lincoln, flying only the Canadian flag and the municipal flag. Dear councillors and Mayor of West Lincoln, we are writing this letter as a matter of, rec of public record in hope that it will be read at the meeting of council to be held on June 16th. 2020. We would like to thank the mayor and the councillors for a fair and democratic approach to the decision of which flags sh should be flown over our municipal buildings. We are thankful that mem that matter was up for deb debate and that council voted in favor of only flying the Canadian and municipal flags. We agree that these flags are, by their very nature, inclusive of all members of our community. We appreciate that there is a lot of pressure to fly a flag that is meant to support a particular segment of our population and highlight the struggles that they feel they are facing. Flying flags to show support for a cause is a wonderful way for individual citizens to express themselves to their neighbours. The township, however, represents not just one resident citizen, it represents them all. It should work to make all citizens feel safe, supported and welcomed. What we like about the decision to keep our Canadian and municipal flag flying is the simplicity of the message. It sends the simplest message that all Canadians, regardless of creed, race, gender, or sexual orientation, or are safe and welcome here. It sends the message that there is no one group held to a different standard than another. The decision to only fly the Canadian and municipal flag is a decision in support of hope and freedom for all. Jason and Jennifer Hemsker. To Mayor and Council, Council of the Township of West Lincoln, as a proud member of the West Lincoln community for all for the past 40 years, Smithville Christian High School would like to express our support of our civic leaders in signaling that West Lincoln is a safe and inclusive community where everyone belongs. As a diverse and inclusive Christian school, one of our core values is belonging, and we support that, our, that for our community as well. We recognize that symbolism is not enough. We all have to work, to work to do. However, you have our support for sending a message of inclusion. Sincerely, Ted Harris, Administrator of the Smithville Christian High School. This is a, an email that was received. I am requesting that my email be read out loud. However, please do not put any priority on my email above someone who is part of a marginal group. I'm a white straight woman and I'm privileged in so many ways, but my opinion shouldn't be louder than someone else's. Privilege is an interesting thing, something I never thought of until I decided to educate myself and encourage our mayor and other residents of West Lincoln to do the same. To understand how our privilege has impacted our views on life, 
and how our privilege can be used for good. Some residents of West Lincoln believe that are driven by the flag, when in fact the flag is just a symbol of more concerning issues within this town. It is creating unrest among our residents on both sides, but I think the con conversation is exactly what this community needs. I think the opportunity to educate and challenge both sides is exciting, but passions are high, passions are high and conversations can lead to anger and shouting and not listening when means people are not learning. We need to lead by example, and this starts with our mayor. West Lincoln is a growing community. You can see new neighbors popping, neighborhoods popping up, and with that brings the opportunity of new residents to the area. If I was a person outside of a traditional white family after reading that interview, I would think twice about moving to West Lincoln. So the comments by our mayor, whether you agree or disagree with them, could deter people from choosing to live here. It might be fine to you and some other West Lincoln residents who are not comfortable with change and differing thoughts and opinions, but it's not fine with me. I want to see more, di more diversity in West Lincoln. I want my children to be open-minded to different cultures, different representations of Canadians. I want this town to be more inclusive of all. What is clear to me is that until we can agree to respect and educate ourselves, on our privilege, the Canadian flag can not truly be represented by all Canadians. Respectfully, Sarah Ripley, 13 years Smith resident. The next email comes from Jen Jen Jessica Theobald. As a resident of West Lincoln residing in Grassy, I fully support Mayor Bell's night in refusing to fly the pride flag. Flag does not stand for our greater country in replacement of our maple leaf flag. My rights are being infringed on as a Christian to see that flag flown, and I'm proud of our mayor to make the stand and act in a way he believes the majority of his constituents would support. I'd like this letter letter to be read and filed as a matter of public record. Next email is from Allie Carson. Good morning. I have been given your email to pass along a letter that should be read for the record tomorrow. I wanted to take this time to address the mayor's uneducated remarks about the LG, LGBTQ plus Indigenous and Black communities. During this time, I feel that it is our responsibility to take action and ensure we are allies for these oppressed uh, communities. I believe that action starts with listening. It's important that we take the time to educate ourselves and start listening about the changes we need to be, about the changes that need to be made benefited a selected few. If you believe that the system is not broken, then the system served you. It is my hope that you take this time to reflect on the mayor's comments and start listening. We are lucky to live in a world with access to many platforms where LGBTQ+, Indigenous, and Black communities are able to speak their truth. I urge you to listen. One way in which West Lincoln can show their support is by starting to fly the pride flag. This flag represents social movements for social equality and individualism. These groups are not violent. Pride represents love for all and the pro progress made so far. I do believe that the mayor's affiliation with the Christian Heritage Party is biased and in fact harmful for individuals who identify as LGBTQ+. When the mayor used the phrase, all lives matter, you are in fact denying this systematic racism exists. The fact is white live, ha lives have always mattered in the eyes of the government and police force. No one is saying your life doesn't matter. However, you cannot say that our lives matter in the eyes of our society. In fact, until black lives matter, there is no truth to all lives matter. The mayor's arguments about violence in Indigenous communities is ignorant. Indigenous communities have been oppressed and faced racism since colonials arrived from colonials arrived from Europe. This is a painful truth that must come to light in order for reconciliation to begin. Indigenous communities have not been given equal opportunities and in fact have been abused by our government 
and people in power. It is time to acknowledge this part of our history and start taking action towards a society that is accepting and inclusive. We have a lot of work to do. I do hope this letter encourages you to start listening. We can only change once we are forced with the uncomfortable truth. Kindest regards, Allie Preston. Good afternoon. I'm reaching out to you regarding the recent controversies regarding the LGBTQ plus community and our marginal groups Mir Balsma spoke about during his radio interview. While I appreciate the work Mr. Belsma has done for our community, I feel it is my obligation to advise you of how, I, how displeased and disheartened I was with his actions in the interview. I feel it would be prudent and beneficial for the town to invest in some targeted training and educational courses for the mayor and council regarding marginal, marginalized groups at risk, youth, and harassment. Unfortunately, I do not believe in an apology from the mayor will be enough, as many people are not aware of this extremist views, but perhaps knowing some educate, educating is taking place, it may give residents some hope. Thank you, Ms. Walshini. As a citizen of West Lincoln, I'm opposed to the gay pride flag being flown because that suggests our citizens are in fact proud to support and agree with that lifestyle choice. I do not stand behind the pride flag and what it stands for as many other West Lincoln residents, so I do think it is appropriate to fly, uh, I do not think it is appropriate to fly this at the township office. The Canadian flag is appropriate because as Canadians, we all stand behind that flag and what it stands for. I value each person as created in God's image and we are all equal and we're all one race. I believe and support the traditional definition of family as declared in the Bible. That's my right. I believe it is the right for all citizens to believe as they would like regarding faith and family as is backed by the Canadian Charter. The mayor also has the right to believe as he chooses <clears throat> and ought not to be forced to resign for his belief. If the mayor was in favor in, in the meaning of the pride flag would he would he be asked to resign because he may express his views? We still do have freedom of religion and conscience in Canada, so no citizen, whether he be mayor or whatever position he may have, ought not to be ostracized by his beliefs. I would like my email to be expressed in file on the township meeting if possible. Signed by Wilma Belsman. I read with dismay. And I saw, I saw, I, Joanne, I saw Envil uh, D. Davidis's hand. I don't know if there's a concern there, Madam the Deputy uh, Mayor. I saw that too, but I was, and I made note of that. But I was allowing our clerk to continue, um, unless there's a, a time issue, and there may be. Um, I just thought it was important. I just received an email that there's uh, a group of rallying outside City Hall. So I just wanted to mention that in case no, in case anyone wanted to know or didn't know because I was unaware of it and I just received an email now. So I just thought it was important to mention. I, I saw that as well, Madam Chair. It's actually on, it's on social media pretty much everywhere. So thank okay. you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. We'll thank allow you. the to continue then. Leave you a breather, Joanne. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> I read with dismay that the mayor has neglected to lead West Lincoln Township in recognizing Pride Month 2020. I read the mayor's email response appended to this meeting announcement and understand that he, received, he receives many emails, we all do, and that it is the clerk who receives such requests normally, but the mayor should realize that this is not a good enough excuse for not reading and passing on the message received by the by economic consequences for all citizens of both West Lincoln and the surrounding communities. I was born in the region, own a home in Grimsby and plan to relocate there this year. In my long career, I have lived abroad and across Canada. Canadians are well known for their welcoming hearts and the respect they show all, to all minority groups. The failure of West Lincoln to recognize Pride Month by raising the flag on June 1st 
is not in keeping with the spirit of respectful respect for all. It's shameful. To mitigate the impact of this oversight, I encourage the Township of West Lincoln to raise the Pride Know Your Flag on June, June 1st, 2021, and I immediately move to use virtual and social media communication to join in the 20, June 2020 celebration of equality with Niagara's LGBTQ plus community. I would be a great it would be a great inconvenience for me to have to drive out of my way to give Township of West Lincoln a wide berth. Should I need to demonstrate further protests of, of Township action in this instance? Please show by your, your decision today and future actions that I and other concerned residents of neighboring townships do not have to do so and rather can continue to frequent the local businesses of West Lincoln Township, Gwen Wildersley. Dear Mr. Mayor, I happened to tune in to you AM 610, AKA Fake News of Niagara, when you spoke with Matt Holmes. And I just wanted to let you know that I, along with many others in the gay community, found nothing wrong in what you said. The backlash that you have received is totally unwarranted and originates from the mainstream media and the minority of individuals who are incapable of thinking for themselves on social political matters and recognizing their own self-righteousness while it exists as a plague in our modern world. I know, I now live in, in St. Catharines, but I originally from Hamilton, where a culture group think is essentially prevalent. Those representing Niagara Pride or Hamilton Pride would have to think that they speak for all gay people everywhere. Well, they do not. Thank you for being honest and speaking the truth as you see it. In a world full of liars and fake politicians who constantly pander to the mob, it means a great deal to have someone in office who demonstrates moral character. Please do not ever apologize for saying something that you do not say or imply. Christopher Popernick. Good afternoon. Could you please circulate my comments to members of council for their information? I'm a firm believer in equality for all people and I think it's important for everyone to be treated with civility and, re and respect at all times. That having been said, I do not think flying a flag is necessary to show the town's commitment to equality. There is a huge difference between supporting people who are members of the LGBTQ plus community and as a town supporting the movement as a whole. The town has the responsibility towards the former, but in no way should it be compelled into promoting the latter. Attendance to a large scale pride parade will see all matters of permiss permissive <laughs> being promoted sexually, sex, uh, stimulated sexual acts, and graphic nudity. Pride is a celebrity of sexuality without any constraints. Well, as an adult, I know that people are free to make these choices. As a mother, I have the responsibility to point my children to the best practice. People have their freedoms to choose their lifestyles, but they can never be free from the, of their choices. There is more tied up in the rainbow flag than just acknowledgement and acceptance of people. And to suggest that a town can fly the flag without actively endorsing all it stands for is more than a little naive. I have seen prominent members of the LGBTQ plus community under the banner of that flag. Call for an end to monogamous relationships, the dismantling of an, a nuclear family, and the abolishment of, a type, of the titles mother, father. Are these views indicative of all members of the community? Certainly not. But when you fly the flag, you don't get to specify what parts of the ideology you are accepting and endorsing to citizens. I think it's far outside the township's purview to be endorsing sexuality without constraints to our youth. I also find it interesting that the mayor being der derided as intolerant and a bigot is the only person who actually talks about an honest debate. From the top
tolerant and inclusive people I have seen calls for a quick fix, calls for the mayor's resignation and an apology. No discussion necessary. This is not acceptable. We cannot silence viewpoints just because we disagree with them. If you believe in inclusivity and equality is important, you don't get to decide that certain ideas are less equal, equal or not worthy of inclusion. I do think any of us want to be part of a society where one feels compelled to keep their thoughts to themselves. Now it is rather an awkward position to be the only municipality not flying the flag. It would have been nice if the others had thought more about what they were endorsing before making decisions. If the town wants to show their support for the members of the LGBTQ plus community, who says it has to be done with the rainbow flag? There are social equality flags that could be used. We can make it a yearly contest for people to design a flag showing equality. You could go the extreme safe route and make a flag that says we respect and value LGBTQ plus people. Any of these options should satisfy the LGBTQ plus community without the town indiscriminately endorsing all things of pride. Please don't conflate loving, respectful, and valuing LGBTQ plus people with a full endorsement of pride movement. Thank you for your time, Emily Box. Dear members of council, we are writing in regards to Mayor Baldwin's radio interview with Matt Holmes of CKTV radio and the controversy around flying the pride flag. It appears the mayor has made an ad hoc decision to not raise the pride flag based on his personal beliefs. We listened to the full interview with dismay. We found Mayor Baldwin's initial and rather rambling explanation of an email that went forgotten or not being received by those who should have seen it as ingenious, disingenuous. Had that explanation been sincere, the flag could have been quickly raised with an apology, no harm, no fool. We find the mayor's explanation, however, an, an example of selective negligence. Then followed the mayor's insistence that the pride flag serves no real purpose now that gay rights are enshrined in Lost my slide here. Mayor Wiener, had the explanation since sincere, the flag could have been quickly raised with an apology, no harm, no foul. We find the, the mayor's explanation, however, an example of selective neglect. Then followed the mayor's insistence that the pride flag serves no real purpose now that gay rights are enshrined into law, totally missing the purpose of Pride Month and the pride flag. There are LGBTQ people in West Lincoln, adults and youth, who still need our affirmation, who still face both subtle and overt unacceptance, and who would feel reassured by the symbol of their place in our community. How painful the mayor's words must be to them and their families. Then followed many minutes of personal inter interpretations of what our mayor was repeatedly called identity politics, seemingly using the term for a political movement that make him feel uncomfortable and repeating that those groups which already have their rights enshrined in law need no special recognition, then saying that protests have been going on for the last 30 years, unclear why he picked 30, and nothing has worked and no progress made. Indigenous rights, the mayor referred to armed guards at the entrance of the Six Nation Reserve near Brantford as an example of no positive progress for Indigenous rights over many years of protest. A quick search found an article of explanation in the Spectator from earlier this spring. Spectator article, March 27th, Protect Our Elders. These guards are members of the reserve's own police force who have been monitoring traffic in and out of the reserve after a large group of people entered break, breaking COVID-19 restrictions, putting the health of residents at, a great, at greater risk. How embarrassing that our mayor would go on local 
radio with opinions and personal observations without checking the facts. No progress. Does Mayor Bilsman know that more than 80% of Canada's Indigenous population now lives off the reserve and that compensation for residential school system is happening now? There much, there's much, much more work to be done, but polit political action and civic engagement have brought change. Black lives matter. Yes, all lives certainly matter. We've heard no one in the Black Lives although they object to all, to all lives matter being used to dis dismiss their protests. Some lives are certainly more at risk during interactions with the police. That is the point they want it recognized. The mayor's lack of understanding of the purpose of civil rights movements, the work of those who seek social justice and the pro progress being made and the work still to be done is very frustrating. One of us, Linda, has ha, was present when the age-friendly flag was raised at the township hall recently. Mayor Vilsma was present too. There was no question that this was a worthy symbol of our township's acceptance of a group of its citizens and, commit and commitment to make the town a good place to live for all ages. So why the difference in the mayor's attitude between the two flags? What he hasn't stated out loud seems obvious to us. The H-friendly flag isn't controversial and he has no personal object, object, objectives to it. The pride flag he suspects runs counter to his personal beliefs about gay rights and perhaps his religious beliefs as well. He is more certainly entitled to his personal beliefs. We defend his rights to his beliefs, but it's not entitled to impose them on West Lincoln. Mayor Bilsma was not being was not being required to march in a pride parade. Just fly a symbol of unity and acceptance, a symbol displayed by all other municipalities in our region. Our mayor seems to be a hardworking and sincere person who wants the best for West Lincoln and its residents. He has made serious missteps and needs to correct the situation quickly, apologize, and move on. We appreciate the council's decision to meet. Sincerely, Richard and Linda Sayer Smithville. It is disappointing but ne necessary that in writing this correspondence to be read into the public record. I feel that it is required for a number of reasons. The LGBTQ plus residents, children, business owners, employees, and volunteers, and any of our local businesses and service agencies need to know that they are respected, loved, and supported in our community. Those who belong to the marginal and racialized communities need to know that they are respected, loved, and supported in our community. I'm sorry, Enzo, how do you say your last name, but I'll just say Enzo, the chairperson of 2021, Pride Niagara Board of Directors, and Mr. Vander Kliss, member of the Curve Lake First Nation, and all of those who belong to any marginalized or racialized communities need to know that that need to know the that actions of the mayor are not reflective of the views of the town citizens. Those live looking to live or invest in the township need to know that West Lincoln acts in accordance with the statements on its website as being a blended community of different perspectives, beliefs and interests and a progressive municipality. Ensure the mayor hears these views that were included in the emails that I sent to himself, as well as Council Banan, Cheryl Banan, and William Riley. I received prompt replies from both councillors, but they are not received a reply from the mayor, so I can only assume he has not read them. If you have not already done so, I urge the mayor and all councillors to read the posts on social media by our young leaders of tomorrow. These thoughtful posts are the voice of those that you are that you represent. Please read, listen, and learn so that you can use your positions to affect the change that they are demanding. At this time, I'd like to thank Councillor Riley for bringing sense and urgency to the call to raise the flag using all the tools he needs, culminating his special council meeting. The mayor is quoted as saying the pride flag might fly at town hall, but only after a proper debate. St. Catherine Standard, June 12th.
it would appear the code of conduct that governs the rules on the Westminster Council as outlined in section 2.2 and 4.1 of the objectives of Pride Niagara should be fully aligned. Therefore, supporting the request of Pride Niagara should not require debate. However, every day that passes without raising the Pride flag amplifies the position the Township of West Lincoln does not re uh, respect the individual rights, values, beliefs, and personality traits of all of any other persons recognized that are all persons that are entitled to be treated equally with dignity and respect for their personal status regarding gender, sexuality, and orientation, race, creed, religion, ability, and spirituality, code of conduct, section 4.1, paragraph 8. A progress, progressive council would have diversity and inclusion as an imperative, imperative uh, in its strategic and operational plans and report publicly on the progress against their plan. Flying the pride flag in support of Pride Niagara would be straightforward approval under this plan. The only debate required is how can council create the conditions to ensure equality and build a community that celebrates and respects diversity, a community that everyone is proud of and wants to live and invest. This debate would follow educational set sessions for council that would explore topics such as how bad is it in West Lincoln for those in the LGBTQ plus community? What equalities are being experienced? Why are some residents leaving and what experience are preventing others from settling in West Lincoln? What are the per perceptions of West Lincoln held by the business community looking to invest in Niagara's region? As part of this imperative and progressive council, would reach out to organizations representing racialized and marginalized communities to ask for their input and assistance and post, how can we help? What more can we do? None of the following are debatable as they are included in the code of conduct as a key facet of a, the community strategic plan. Council should live up to its stated mission of providing responsive customer service by accepting all requests by residents or community-based groups. If a resident or community group sends an inquiry or request to anyone on council, the recipient, recipient should immediately refer the request to the appropriate committee or staff person and respond to the requester with the action taken. The requester can be educated on the, per, on the preferred, so any future request is administered with less hands off. A regressive council hides behind the emails and uses processes to delay the action. Council will respect council's decision-making process, even if they agree with council's ultimate determinations and ruling. Code of Conduct, Section 4.1, Paragraph H. I urge council to go beyond the compromise table by Pride Niagara to raise the Pride flag on June 1, 2021. Council should raise the Pride flag to fly with the Canadian flag immediately and for the remainder of Pride Month. The day is young. Why not raise it today? Every day that passes makes a subsequent apology a hollow one. Let our residents in West Lincoln celebrate our differences and fight for equality for everyone, something that is urgently needed. Let us love one another. Love is love. Thank you. Stay safe and be well. Steve Whitelock, St. John. Madam Clerk, um, I just wonder, or sorry, Madam Chair, I just wonder if at this point we should be picking a motion to extend the hour that was allotted. I feel like we're creeping pretty close to it right now, if not already. And I was watching the time as well. Um, we did say that we wanted to hear them all, and I think it's wise that we're doing that. So I think to our administrator, um, Roberta Keith, maybe it's within her purview, is it, to... Um, to deal with the timing of the meeting. Madam Clerk, do you know that? I mean, oh. Is it a procedural uh, matter through the clerk's office to have it on the record that we've requested, we've taken a vote to extend the allowed hour that was required for the public feedback? Uh, I see Joanne moving her head up and down, yes. So yeah. maybe through you to the clerk, can we just clarify that? So technically it's not an issue. And Thank you, uh, Roberta, for doing that. And Joanne, uh, Matt Clerk, do we need to have a motion to extend this meeting? 
we can have a motion to extend the free request to address items beyond the one hour. Yes. Okay. Thank you, then, Councilor Rogers, for bringing that up. Are you making that motion? I am. Yes. And do we have someone to second that motion, Councilor Cody? I will. Sorry, I didn't see you, Councilor Jonker. No problem. <laughs> Now you're down in my corner. I'm sorry. Any, um, all those in favor of extending this time period? Any comments or questions? Um, okay. um, Deputy CEO, uh, Deputy uh, Mayor, maybe. So, Councillor Trombetta, you're not, you're not following the motion to extend the meeting. This portion of the meeting is what we're looking to do. You're muted, sir. And, and I agree with you, uh, Deputy Mayor, but the thing is, there's a section for comments or questions. Maybe that can allow uh, Councillor Yonker to, you just called the vote right away without no, any no, comments. No, 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 no. All we're trying to do, the vote is to extend this time frame, where we should have one hour allowed for comments from the public to make sure that we have the opportunity to hear whatever else the clerk has to tell us. All we're looking to do is just extend this time frame, and then we'll continue on. Okay. Councillor Jonker was just looking to second the motion. We both raised our hands at the same time. Uh, yes, same that's, time. that's right. But he was kind of I'm in, I'm in support. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to call the motion to extend this portion of the meeting so that we continue to hear the rest of the people who have submitted information to our clerk and they wish to have it read today. So all those in favor? Okay. Any opposed? No, looks like that's good. Okay, thank you. That motion carries. So again, Madam Clerk, you've had a little bit of a throat rash and a breather, and uh, we'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Councillors. Thank you, Acting Mayor. Good day to you. It came to our attention that there is a problem with which, fl which flag to raise. We have a Canada flag and a West Lincoln flag. That would seem to be sufficient for our town and our country. To start to raise flags for all kinds of special interests and causes is overdoing the flag, excuse me, like flying and does not and does nothing to promote unity with respect yours truly Richard and Nellie Easterhoff. Dear Township Clerk she may I am in support I am in full support for dignity and worth of the LGBTQ citizens. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration. Best wishes Michael Myers. My wife and I are recently shocked and saddened by the comments made by our mayor. The disrespect he has shown to the members of the LGBTQ community are atrocious. Our mayor then continued on and doubled down and attacked the black community with his all lives matter retort. He is a select, sorry, this is a direct slap in the face of the black community that continues to struggle to find a voice and a system where they do not face daily discrimination. They may have been enough, but no, not for this man. He then went on to attack the native Canadians who he feels should should put down their guns to what once again faced genocide like the like their ancestors. Let's not forget we as white people put the guns in their hand when we arrived and stole their land. His reference to all Canadian under one flag is a cheap attempt to make this about being Canadian. We celebrated under many flags that I see around all around West Lincoln. Should we move the Ontario agricultural flag, the Ontario flag? This anti-gay man is using the Canadian flag as a shield and that is wrong. Our mayor comments are an embarrassment to this community. He needs to hand his, in his resignation. The fact that he is president of the party that distributes this Awful material says all. Sorry, that was. Um, oh, sorry. Let's continue. Lori and Lori Levy, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of worship, oppressor, and that's a quote from Desmond Tutu. So I'm writing to let you know how horrified and disgusted I am at your recent comments in the interview with News Talk 610. First of all, the LGBTQ plus flag needs to be raised. This decision will not divide the community, as you said. This will be a symbol to all of the LGBTQ plus people of West Lincoln, and they are welcome and accepted here. Something 
that many of them have never felt before. Your argument of identity politics does not apply to in this situation. This is a matter of human rights, acceptance, and pride. Your position in the, in the Christian Heritage Party, a political party that single-handedly attempts to take rights away from the LGBTQ plus community, women, or whatever else goes against your religious beliefs, only makes myself and other members of our community realize that your position on this matter does not actually have anything to do with identity politics. It is simply your personal religious beliefs to not fly the pride flag. I understand a large majority of Blessington identifies as Christian. As someone who comes from a Dutch Christian household, I experience a hatred that is somehow justified by religion every day. What I'm asking you, Mayor, is to change this in order to make your community a better place to live for everyone, not just Christians. Secondly, saying all matters all lives matter is not only problematic but extremely racist. No one is identifying that white lives matter or any other race for that matter. We say black lives matter because that is who needs the that is who needs the world's attention right now. Black people along with the LGBTQ plus community have been facing injustices and oppressions for hundreds of years. You wouldn't tell someone at a walk trying to raise awareness for breast cancer that there are other types of cancers. All cancers matter. So why are you saying all lives matter? I'm cho choosing to believe that this was a mistake on your part and I'm not truly racial, racially based, but I'm urging you to please educate yourself before speaking out on the topic again. You are the leader of Blissington, a town that is far behind the rest of Niagara in progressiveness and acceptance. As a woman who lives and works in Smithville, I have received and seen others receive racist, sexist, and homophobic comments on a daily basis. You being the leader of this town are not only halting the ex expansion of true equality and comfort for all citizens, you are single-handedly turning West Lincoln into a regressive and unaccepting community. It is far past time for West Lincoln to join our neighbors in becoming a welcoming community for people of all races, sexual orientations, genders, and religions, and something I have never felt in my 20 years of living here. Sincerely, Cindy Willis. Dear Mr. Billsmore, with respect to the matter of the pride flag, I have listened to your, your appearance on 610 News Talk. By chance, I was also able to hear our two counselors representative live, live later. They were incredibly respectful and supportive of you despite their differences of opinion. In response to some of the things said this morning, I was aware it is your job to be aware. There will be a discussion. What is the discussion? If you raise an, an age-friendly flag, what is the problem with raising a pride flag? What is wrong with just one flag? Some Indigenous people find the Canadian flag offensive because they were here first. We don't get to tell others how to identify as being Canadian. The, fly, the pride flag is about saying we are an inclusive community despite our differences. You blame identity politics. I blame privilege experience from being white, male, and Christian. Your views are an example of systematic problems. I share your faith in Jesus. I do not share some of your other views. Please do the right thing and raise the flag to say West Lincoln is inclusive and we support the LGBTQ plus community. Tara Dalgish. We should not wave the pride flag in West Lincoln. We are prominently Christian community. It is not that we don't love the LGBT community. We are calling to love all people, including LGBTQ community. But does loving them mean we tolerate that they do and allow them to celebrate their lifestyle? No. A true neighbor and a true friend will also tell you what you don't want to hear sometimes. Just because someone wants to embrace a certain lifestyle doesn't mean it's for their own good. 
This is why we Christians, including Mayor Bosma, are taking a stand. Respectfully, Jay and Heather Peters. I am watching the developments of our local government this past week in regards to the following demand made to fly the flag in West Lincoln. I'm opposed to the idea for the following reasons. Identity politics has no business in municipal government. It is your job to use our tax taxes wisely and to build and develop our township. Identity politics has been battled and freedoms to practice and express sex different sexual orientations have already been won politically in Canada. Canada is a diverse country. We are all united under the Canadian flag, singling our one group for singling out our one group for promoting actual promotes disunity in our communities. The evidence of this is now happening in our communities on social and local media. If minority group flags are to be flown locally, we should fly all flags that are important to the community members. These could include various religious group promotions and promotion of political and personal convictions. To be truly inclusive of all other flags would also have to be allowed to fly upon request. I am also quite upset and disgusted to see how our mayor is being publicly attacked by the media because he was bold and brave enough to share his opinion. Because his opinion was in opposition to certain popular opinion, he has been called a bigot, a racist, and asked to apologize and resign his position. What happened to freedom of speech? What happened to the democratic process? Nothing Mr. Mayor said was racist or bigot. His words have been twisted and taken out of context. The media should be taken to task and called to account for this. Democracy only works if we, we allow freedom of speech and labeling his words as hate speech is nothing more than a smoke screen from an act for the actual agenda, which is silence, silence his freedom of speech. I am calling for a public apology to the mayor for defaming his good character. Please read this letter at your next meeting and make a matter of public record, Eric Ravensbergen. Hi Dave, step one, tie the rainbow flag to the pole. Step two, raise the flag, that is all. I'm, I'm disappointed that you or anyone in West Lincoln would even hesitate to support the marginalized members of our community. If you have not already done so, go out on the front and raise the flag. If, it's a, if it is a budget issue, I'll pay for this flag. Send me your receipt and I will transfer you the funds. Now, Go do this now. Thanks for thank you, Councillor Riley, for your support and open letter to Dave James Shamings. Shaming. I'm writing this letter to support the stance of our mayor to not raise the pride flag in West Lincoln. Identity politics has no place in local government. If the argument to fly the pride flag are related to inclusiveness, we are already united under the Canadian Maple Leaf. We are a diverse culture. No one single group should be promoted in such a way politically as this promotes dissension rather than unity. If we are to fly the pride flag in our township, we should also fly the hashtag fetal libs matter to flag or hashtag national day of prayer flag or hashtag heterosexual day flag, etc. As we each have our own personal and political convictions, I am also appalled to see how our mayor is being crucified in the media for stating his opinion on the matter being labeled a bigot and racist. This is no factual ground for these accusations based on any words the mayor actually spoke. His words have been twisted and taken out of context and an apology should be made to the mayor for labeling him in such a way. Rather than demanding he apologize or resign his position, we are democracy and that reason and for that reason freedom of speech may not be punished in any way. Our voices need to be heard even if we disagree for democracy to work or the freedom we enjoy because of this democracy we slowly erode into. Please read this letter into the public record at the next meeting. Thanks, Roz Ravens. I'm a long resident of Smithville and an ally to spirit, indigenous, black, and LGBTQ plus communities. I will not stay silent and I do not appreciate the lack of action and consideration of your marginalized constituents, especially in the current political and social climate. As mayor, you should support social inclusion, 
respect for all life and recognize the importance of having a safe space. The pride flag sing, sing, signals all that to the community. I want to clear that our mayor and council should not tolerate any form of racism, discrimination, or intolerance. Pride happens every year, starting June 1st. Please mark your calendars accordingly. Do you actually need a formal yearly request to raise a flag, or can you take your own initiative? The world is in need of empathy, moral leadership, and strength. Use your voice, raise the flag, and do your job. Shame on you. Sincerely, Tom Kessler. Good evening. Regarding Mr. Mayor, Mayor Ballsmith's decision not to put up the pride flag, I want to make our family sentiments known. We heartily agree with his decision, and we know it was a decision made. We know it wasn't a decision made rashly or taken lightly, but had a lot of thought put into it. We have no issue with the LGBTQ community. However, we all have the same rights and are all equal. Their relationships should be treated like the rest of the population. We stand with the mayor's decision, the Brad's family at Smithville. I would like to read this, like you can read this into public record. I support Dave on his views on not flying the pride flag. I believe it is a it is dangerous to allow any particular social group to fly its flag on some property. If the pride flag is allowed to fly, then any social or religious group must also be given the opportunity to fly a flag of their own on the township property or set up a display promoting their belief or agenda. I don't believe this is desired and it certainly would bring controversy and division to our community. As Dave has alluded, we are united under one flag, the Canadian flag. That and that alone is what should be flying on town property. Canada is clearly a country with many different ethnic and social and religious groups, and therefore this unity is all in more importance. Please don't give preference to one specific group. I also thought Dave's comments on the issue were careful and thoughtful, in no way deserving of the hateful comments that have been directed to him. John and Angela Gerdau. I am emailing in regards to the special council meetings scheduled for tomorrow. I live in Cambridge and I spend a fair amount of time in Smithville visiting my girlfriend with her son. As a queer woman, knowing that the town that I frequently visit does not support the LGBTQ community, deeply saddens me. That the township feels it is appropriate to speak out against the Black Lives Matter movement and other protests being done for change disgusts me. By refusing to acknowledge the struggles that minority and marginalized groups and queer people would have gone through, your mayor has shown that he wants to maintain a small town backwoods status quo, which makes queer folk feel unsafe to come out. I want to live in and visit a town that promotes equality, not only where I'm not one where I'm afraid to hold my girlfriend's hand and walking down the street. I ask that your town put up the pride flag in solidarity with the rest of the region and apologize for not doing it sooner. I also ask that your mayor educate himself on the Black Lives Matter movement, the LGBTQ rights, as well as the Indigenous rights, so the next time he has an interview, he doesn't embarrass the region he serves. Thank you, and Amy Scotchwich. Hello, my name is Zachary. Decker. I live in Smith and I have for most of my life. The reason I am writing to you today is to voice my opinion on the pride flag vote. I would like to state that I am again I'm against flying the pride flag that it only represent one group of people very specifically. We are a township of all genders, beliefs, and racial backgrounds. For us to fly the pride flag would grossly miss represent the rest of us taxpayers who live here, including myself. I feel that flying any flag other than our community flag is not only misrepresenting us, but will only cause a larger divide between us all through identity politics. The township is not just about LGBTQ+. It does. It also represents all the heterosexual people, that religious people, Muslims, that uh, Christians, Buddhists, 
we all identify differently in our personal lives. However, under the Canadian flag, we all unite as one group of people with a collective respect and responsibility to care for one another. To fly an LGBTQ flag or a Black Lives Matter flag or any other flag will show and imply that we are not un united the way we truly are. We are blessed to live in a community where we, where no matter who you are, you are who you are, or where you're from, or what you believe, or what your gender is, you are welcome and belong to belong that you belong here. We show this every day in the smallest things we do each day, the way we re interact with each other. So let us come together as Canadians, not divide as groups or religions, but as one true north strong and free people. In closing, I urge you and the other counselors to see that the LGBTQ plus flag is not an appropriate representation for all of us in the Western community, but only those who belong to the LGBTQ community and will cause other people of our community, including myself, to feel unimportant, unwelcome within our homes, for which I've lived for 22 years. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Zachary Becker. Good afternoon. I would like to state our stance on the pride flag debate going on in our town. We would like to see the Canadian flag the only flag that is going to represent all that are living here. It includes all Canadians, so we don't feel a need for a pride flag. We also want to say that we support David Bilsma and we appreciate all the hard work he is doing here in Gen Zebra. Our family has been living in Grassy for 18 years. My husband John had lived in Smithville all his life before he set roots in Grassy. We have not always agreed with councils through the years, but we have always believed that decisions were made for the benefit of most, if not all residents. However, after listening to the interview that our mayor gave on Thursday, June 11th, we were appalled. The obvious bias that our mayor has against many marginalized groups within our community is evident. I'm sure he doesn't have any difficulty collecting tax money for all citizens, however, he apparently has difficulty being respectful of all residents in our community. In most cases, when someone dis mis speaks, an apology can normally fix the error. What Mayor Bilsma said was not an example of someone misspeaking. He showed us that he would rather stick to the city and agenda of the HP that he is president of than fulfill his duties to respect and fairly represent all citizens of West Lincoln. As you know, a petition has been circulating online, which I'm very proud to say was our daughter's idea. There are approximately 3,400 signatures at this point. The majority of the community that I've spoken with have had enough of bias and prejudice. We cannot allow ourselves to be re represented by a mayor who cannot separate his personal and religious beliefs from his elected position. We are asking for Mayor Bilsma's resignation. There is nothing we can do to convince us. There is nothing we can he can do to convince us that he can fulfill his obligations in a fair, policy-based, and non-biased manner. I would like to know, as a councillor, how you will be addressing this issue, Captain Petropolis. I am wondering how the members of public may watch council meetings while the town hall chambers remain closed. Oh, okay, sorry. They're just asking about the meeting being closed to the public. Sorry, it has nothing to do with that. Um, regarding the debate on whether to fly certain flags for the municipal building, please stay within your mandate and focus on municipal business. You are not called upon to promote certain lifestyles regardless of how much pressure is applied to you to be politically correct. In the past, West Lincoln made decisions to stay away from making proclamations in order to avoid confusion and avoid unnecessary controversies. Rather than be diverse in promoting the lifestyles of a small group with a controversial agenda and fly their flag, make an effort to show unity among Canadians and proudly fly the Canadian flag only. Wishing you God's blessing in your work. Respectfully, Jack and Jenny Vanderveen. The last letter to West Lincoln Council. We, Neil and Liz, this 
totally disagree with the raising of the LGBTQ flag in West Lincoln. We pray and trust the council will not agree to the request of raising the flag. We would like this letter read in at the June 16th council meeting and filed as a matter of public record. We believe that the LGBTQ group are trying to bully council and take away the freedom we have in West Lincoln. If any flags are raised in West Lincoln, it should be for the victims of COVID-19 virus. Yours truly, Leo and Leo Vince and Elizabeth Smith. And that is all of the uh, comments that have been received. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That was a lot. Never will any of us ever again complain about reading bylaws. <laughs> you, you had a lot to do there. So thank you for that. And thank you, counselors, for listening attentively to that. We're going to leave this portion now as we do have an appointment and a presentation. And we're going to allow um, Enzo de Davides to talk to us um, as he was asked to do today. So. Um, We've moved to section three, which is and presentations, and Andrew, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you for reading all the letters as well and all the emails. It's appreciated. Uh, our initial request that we submitted for to do something via social media and to put the request in for 2021 was obviously prior to uh, Mr. Mayor's interview. So that's kind of changed the feedback from the community and what they were expecting, obviously. So we still would like to put the request in for 2021, but uh, an explanation and or apology for the miscommunication would just seem ingenuine at this point and uh, like another lie. So I don't think that would be useful to present to anyone. We would like to officially make the motion for 2021 though. So is there anything further that you want to talk about? Or shall we, do you want questions to come from? Yes, definitely. Um, something has to come out of, has to come out of it in a positive progressive way because clearly, like the majority of the letters that were just read is a prime example why there should be something done, why there should be a fright flag, because the majority of the opposing ones strictly spoke about the religious views or their personal views, which should not be a part of the decision should not be what it is not what the pride flag represents um, when they also specifically said it was homosexual and not heterosexual and that's again not what that flag is it's a it's a symbol of freedom and equality and justice so each color like we read earlier has a meaning none of it is based on gender or homosexuality or um, whatever bogus political agenda we want to tag on it not putting it up if you just look around at this point every other municipality has so not putting it up is just almost not only a slap in the face to the people that it represents to the community members that it will help um, if a minority is saying that they're not feeling included in your town if that symbol that you're making them or forcing them to say this should symbolize you if they're saying it doesn't you, we have an obligation to do something to make them feel included, to make them feel safe. So just, and it's not a social group or a, an interest group. It's a culture. It's a group of people that are not being represented. And the rest of our cities have already stood up and said they're aware of that. The rest, our prime minister has stood up and said they're aware of that. They pub, uh, did a formal apology a few years ago on behalf of the government of Canada. So it kind of seems slightly ludicrous for us not to participate in that. It has nothing to do with personal views. I'm well aware of the mayor's uh, religious views and his personal stance, and that's fantastic. I'm a person of faith as well, but that has does not base my political actions, and that would not make me exclude a group of people based on that, or to trivialize it and put it as a social group or a, an interest group. It represents everyone. It symbolizes equality. So we would like something to be done of that now, and we would like to see something that a lot of people have touched in the letters, some form of education with the council so they can show that they are actually following through. Uh, we'd like to do, a, we're really big on acknowledgement and accountability. 
acknowledging it now at this point is one step, but there has to be some accountability and follow-up action how the council must realize that it's not being represented to all the minorities in West Lincoln, that they're not feeling included. I'm not even touching on the rest of the issues that we're talking about, Black Lives Matter and our Indigenous people. Like, that's just shocking to begin with. I don't even want to touch on that. But if there's all these, there's a rally out front. There's the one letter that stated that there was, I think, like maybe 700 people saying it was not to have the flag, or I'm not sure the number originally. But this morning, there was almost 4,000 people asking for the mayor's resignation. So if we're going to do numbers, like if you would cut it down the middle, we're not suggesting that, but if there's that one survey asking for him to step down from his position. So obviously, there's a lot amount of people that don't feel represented. So I just feel education and doing something proactive moving forward to show accountability. So thank you then for those comments. Could I just ask a little bit of a historical perspective of you, please? I know, obviously, it was in our face that we are the only municipality this time. Were there others that this was the first time? Are there other communities sort of late to the coming on board as well? And we just missed the boat this time? Oh, no, absolutely. There are other municipalities that just came on this year. For example, the city of Laurel just came on this year. Wayne has been on for two years. Lincoln has been on for about three years. But the main difference there was not once have they said, we didn't receive your email, or not once have they said, this isn't our responsibility. Because although Pride Niagara takes pride in this initiative, by no means do we think it's our municipal right and duty to make sure each town and city represent their community. That's the council's job. That's the mayor's job. They should be aware of these things that are happening. But each other municipality in the past has emailed back or followed up and said, we can't do it now, or that we have a certain policy for this or that, or we didn't meet certain deadlines or whatever, what have you. And they always followed up, or they did some type of initiative. They may not have done the flag, but they did something. This year, like I said, it was Thorold's first year. But no one has ever flat out said any comments of bigotry or hate or mocked or chalked down the initiative or have been that dismissive. Thank you very much for that. Are there any other questions from members of council? Councilor Riley? Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Enzo. Just to kind of, I guess, to get on record, do you recall when you first reached out to West Lincoln, just like, I'm not talking about this year, I'm just talking about in previous years coming, like, I'm just trying to get an understanding of the communication consistency here. So like, do you recall how far back? Like, this certainly wasn't the first year you reached out, I don't believe, right? Absolutely not. We've been reaching out to all the municipalities the past eight years. Pride Niagara has been around for 10, this is our 10th year, but we've been doing it for seven to eight years. We've reached out to every municipality. Okay. Thank you. And I agree. I agree with many of the things you said there. I think, you know, one thing council should look at is, you know, and not necessarily just at the mayor, but maybe council in general, some sensitivity training. I definitely think that is something we all need to be aware of when we speak on behalf of our community and the impact it could have on the corporation itself and how that's reflected and how that's communicated. So, but Enzo, thank you so much for speaking today and standing here and listening to that. I think there's a lot of learning that's happening. I think this is the time of day where we were seeing the conversation actually taking place. Like you said, eight years and this conversation, from what I'm going to guess, has never really happened or taken place in West Lincoln. And this is where we move. This is how we learn to grow. And hopefully the community is going to hear this, reflect, and then we're going to be stronger for it in the future. So I hope that you, if anything, from my experience on council, most time we only hear from people when they're in opposition. And based on those letters, never mind the outpour on social media and everything else, it's certainly not opposition heavy by any capacity. Even from the correspondence I have, I'd say it's got to be close to 80% of the communities in support of this. And that's just from no real mathematical basis, just from my self-assessment, from my correspondence, it honestly felt like, you know, it's probably somewhere around one in five people kind of had an opinion of one flag in there. They, you know, they kind of played it however it pertains to them, but certainly by no means do I think our community have their back to the LGBTQ plus community 
Um, and so, you know, I'd like to see this moving forward. But anyways, I'll cut my comments off here. Uh, I'll let other councillors speak to it. Thank you. So I next uh, Councillor Jonker and then Councillor Trombetta. So Councillor Jonker. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, state by uh, the, what I believe. Uh, I, I guess the question I wanted to ask is, what is our bylaw right now? So any, uh, how does it work? If somebody That's a point of order. This is a time to ask Enzo questions. Yeah. Okay, yes, sorry. We'll come back to yeah. that, Mr. Jonker. Okay. Uh, and, and that needs to be part of our discussion as well, That the policy issue. Do you have something specifically that you want to ask Enzo? Okay, thank you. Okay, so Councillor Trombetta, please. Yes, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Enzo, so first and foremost, I'd like to apologize um, uh, on behalf of uh, West Lincoln. Again, this is something that came to uh, the mayor and it didn't come to council. Um, I, uh, just to give you a little bit of history here, I know this came because there were some emails that were getting sent and uh, I uh, reached out to the mayor and asked him to give his delegation to someone else if he wasn't willing to do it and, and that uh, obviously fell on deaf ears and then i asked the, the uh, mayor to uh, call a special council meeting and again he he blatantly uh, lied said staff didn't have time and it took the matter of council to uh to take care of this matter and put it into our own hands so on behalf of west lincoln i'd like to apologize it should have never got this far the request was made just like other requests come in the past and it was uh, pushed to the wayside by a certain individual, not by the members of this council. I want to thank you for coming out. It's much appreciated. I like the uh, the uh, correspondence that you sent to the, the council and we're gonna be acting on that motion as soon as we hear from the rest of council. Again, I'd like to give an apology to you and uh, that's fine. I'm quite sure other members of council would like to uh, put their voice through. So I just wanted to give you a little history on that. But again, thank you for reaching out and please Feel free to reach out to me at any time or any other member of council. We have emails that are available. Please feel free because we're gonna prevent something like this happening and uh, losing our democratic process uh, in this event. So, uh, because of something that again sent to us uh, by, okay. by the uh, mayor that uh, received it. So thank you again, Enzo. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you, councilor. Any other councilors? Mayor Bilsma, you'd like to speak? Yeah, so um, let me let me start by saying um, uh, to uh, Enzo that I do apologize for not passing the uh, the email on again. Um, you know, uh, it was an oversight, and I you know maybe many people are uh, questioning that, but uh, it was. I um, I did find it interesting that um, you've reached out to this municipality for uh, for eight years already. Um, I am a, a councillor in the previous term. And um, as is uh, Councillor Trombetta, uh, Councillor Ganan, um, I had never seen a communication from Pride Niagara uh, come uh, to council. Um, so it kind of begs the question um, uh, a, li a little bit uh, on, on, the, on the presentation or, or the presenting of, of, of an email. I, I guess um, I stand in eight year, uh, eight year history for my part in that eight year history of receiving the communication and not passing forward, I apologize. I, um, I have uh, just uh, a couple of questions. Um, one of them, I, I, there's, a, there's a, a, a portion of this that's talking about a uh, community capacity fund. So this is not just about, your, your request is not just about a pride flag. Does it include uh, a, a su uh, support for funding? No, that was another. That was another request that we sent in. A separate request that was also ignored. So that was a request for support from the uh, town of West Lincoln to write a letter of support for the Pride Niagara and the LGBTQ plus community within Niagara that we are uh -huh. applying for. But every other municipality gave us a letter of support as well as school boards, uh, local MPs, businesses, okay. uh, several different organizations. That was just one of the other emails that fell aside. So I guess consistency. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, thank you for clearing that. Um, just in, in kind of your opening, uh, I just have one, just a, more of a clarification. Um, you, you, you started in, in your uh, presentation by acknowledging that there were many letters um, um, opposing flying the uh, LGBT, the, the pride flag. Um, 
and you dismissed those residents' concerns because they had uh, religious uh, views, or they expressed some religious views, or they said, God bless you at the end. Um, I did not dismiss them for having religious views. Well, you, you said, you said they, they, shouldn't be, they shouldn't be taken into consideration in this debate. Point of order, Deputy Mayor, this is not yeah, a debate. Not this is not things. a debate here about no, Deputy Mayor. No. no. Just one minute, Mayor, just a minute. Okay, so part of, part of this process is not to debate, but just to ask questions and, and get an answer. So no, I, my point I, I, of is about to be called. However, I'm going to allow you to ask your question and allow Enzo to answer that question before you cut back in, okay? Okay, so okay. My, my, my question is just simply, how is that not a marginalization? Okay, thank you. Now Enzo. Um, I did not dismiss them based on saying God bless or dismiss them on religion. I d said certain letters prove that this is needed because if they're, if it's being presented by one outlook, if it's being based on the, a religious view that we're all under one God, like some of the comments were, that's not true because there are many different religions. There's many different beliefs. So that specific letter is for one specific viewpoint. And I understand that and respect that. And I also mentioned, I'm also a person of faith. So I would have signed an email, God bless as well. But if to say that that one viewpoint is valid, it's not a broad one. And still with anyone that's saying, uh, anyone that were pro for the flag that said it was from one viewpoint of LGBTQ plus, it's also not as broad point. I'm looking at the larger picture of equality and acceptance and making people feel safe. And I think the bulk of the letters and the bulk of the people reaching out were, they wanted to feel safe and accepted in something that represents them. And the pride flag is something that re represents equality and healthy balance. Okay, and uh, just one last, uh, there was, I, I just wanted to uh, call to attention and, and highlight, um, one that I found particularly interesting was a letter by uh, Christopher Trompenek, I think is uh, what I heard. Um, and uh, I, I found that one to be very, um, very curious because he identified as, as part of the LGBTQ uh, community, um, but uh, he, he did understand uh, the dialogue that I was trying to put forward on the radio. So um, I, I guess, my takeaway is, and, and that was my that was my view. That was it's it's a legitimate. I, I what my takeaway on that particular one, and he didn't have to, but he, he decided to come forward and said that there were many people who thought like him, and as did many people in their letters. We only take the letters that have signed a name, but I, I found that. Um, so Mayor Bill, I'm going to cut you off as well because this is not to be a discussion of the correspondence. Do you have another question that you expect? Mr. DeJavides to be able to answer based on this, not not a discussion about the letters or the I, course. I, um, just just one. Uh, I would like to um, uh, follow up with uh, uh, education. Um, I, I have many questions. Um, you know, I, I'll say this: um, in the last two weeks, I have learned a lot, um, and uh, so you know, I, I, I would like to find out more and. Uh, so I, uh, I would take up that offer to, uh, to be educated and, and have a, a much more fulsome discussion. Um, I understand uh, the challenges with Zoom and such like that, uh, but I would like to, uh, to sit down and, and find out more information. So uh, thank you for that offer to uh, provide education to our council. Thank you for no that. Further. Anything further, Enzo, that you'd like to say? Um, it, the offers definitely is there, but it wasn't necessarily an offer as it was a request for the council to educate themselves as grown adults. And on, on that letter, I, of uh, that gentleman that said he was a part of the LGBTQ, um, community and opposed that there are many groups of people that have self hate. I know many Christians that spread out hate at the same time. So I think it's equal playing field. You know what I mean? Like there's self hate is in each individual. So can I can I call my order again? Sorry, yeah. we stopped the mayor from speaking to communications, so we should stop you from speaking yeah. to communications also. Absolutely, thank you, councillor. Okay, so I think I've been to most councillors to see if there's a further question for Enzo. If not, he's going to continue with our meeting. But I'm going to thank you for your time right now.
and we're going to move on with the rest of this. Um, Councillor Cody, I think that based on the presentation, you have a resolution. I do, and if you'll bear with oh, me at the end of it. Hold on one minute, Coun Councillor Jonker before that is waving his hand at me again. I will say I'm not a fan of these Zoom meetings. I like better to see people, but go ahead, Councillor Jonker. A question? I, I would just like to see if we could have a quick washroom break. The meeting has gone longer than I expected, and I didn't get a chance to prepare properly for a two-hour meeting. So can, I will can we get that? I will second that request. Okay, thank you. Is that okay that we just step out, uh, away for two minutes? Step aside if you need to step aside, but uh, let's call that definitely only two minutes. Be yeah. quick. All the men leave the room. <laughs> oh, you're still there. Okay. An eating break. Okay. Cheryl, so what's coming next is going to be a resolution, mover, right. supporter, and then it's going to come up for another round of communicate or conversation. Is that what I'm understanding? So I make sure that I think that's how that works. It's I think that's how it should go. Just how, uh, just how it's clicked with the appoint, appointment. I just normally we have a section for it. So okay, so so that was that. So the resolution will come based on this according to what we have, and then. Further discussion, but not new point. I mean, new points, not. And then a vote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I would just like to uh, say thank you very much, Councilor Junker. <laughs> it was all the men who left the room. I want you I to. I drink too much water. That's my problem. I, yes. I, I, I'm yes. easily at like four liters a day. I, I just. Oh, oh well. We're ready to start back as soon as oh, Councillor Rain is back. So, okay. okay. Looks like one, two. We have every, I think I think we have everybody back. So um, we're ready to go on with that. Hopefully, everybody's feeling a little bit better and ready to move on with this meeting. So, um, Councillor Cody, we were just about to say that you have a resolution. Uh, before you that sort of follows this it's a little bit different process than normal mm -hmm. but um, if you'd like to read that I think yeah. what I will do because everyone has it in front of them I think I will ask for um, a seconder so that it's easier for our clerk to yeah, follow I would hold off I have I will be adding on to the end of this um, yeah. and so, you so uh, add it first before we get a seconder yeah because uh, you never know the seconder could maybe not agree with my additions okay okay that's fine fair enough I, I think probably we could do it and then do it as amendments, but it might be purer this way. So go ahead. Bill. Okay, moved by myself that the correspondence received from Enzo D. DeVitas, Chairperson 2020-2021, Pride Niagara Board of Directors, dated June 10th, 2020, requesting the Township of West Lincoln to, one, raise the Pride flag on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021, and two, that the, that the Township shares some type I'm, I'm, I'm editing there some type of virtual communication slash message on their social media and provide the same for pride Niagara to share explaining that the township wanted to be part of a celebration of equality with Niagara's LGBTQ plus community and that there was a miscommunication and plans are in effect for next year to which would be signed on behalf of township of West Lincoln mayor and council be received and supported and that the township of West Lincoln fly the pride flag for the remainder of the June of June 2020 and 
that all flag raising requests outside of this motion be suspended until such time as township staff have prepared a flag raising policy and have reported back at future council or committee meetings. Okay, so now I will ask, do we have somebody who will second that? Councillor Harvey? Nope. Councillor Rayner, sorry, did you want to speak? You're going to No, I will second that. Madam okay, Chair. so let's, I did see Councillor Riley first, but let's allow mm -hmm. Councillor Riley. Councillor Riley, you have another thing coming up. I'm going to allow Councillor Rayner to second that to keep that simple, is that okay? That's completely fine. Okay, thank you then. So I'm going to now, you've heard the resolution. It does have things added to it from the original that you had. The additions imply that we're going to rectify the situation by flying the flag now for the remainder of this and that we're not going to do anything else about flags until uh, flags until we have a policy in place so uh, to sort of simplify what councillor cody said is that fine with you councillor cody the way i have put it back into perspective correct okay thank we'll you all of this again okay so we will do that so now i'm going to ask if there are any comments or questions but they should be new information or something different than we've already discussed so now, Councillor Riley, I see your hand. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, so I'll try to make it quick. I'm sure it's going to create some uh, uh, maybe uh, dialogue in between. But um, I did want to just point out the fact that um, when this all came to be, like this was pr primarily about um, what I would consider like a procedural um, a failure. Uh, you know, it came through the, the you know the wrong channel, um, and not even as so much as the wrong channel. I think that it was a, almost like an unspoken rule of where. Um, how to communicate with our township. And that's one thing we seem to be correcting quite a bit, um, whether it's, you know, focusing on correcting the naming of uh, roads or um, now in this situation, making it clear how to communicate with our municipality. Um, so this was the whole point of bringing this uh, to the light here is actually to identify the fact that this was, this didn't need to come to a special council meeting. Uh, the mayor was very capable of correcting this oversight. He's acknowledged and, and has taken responsibility that it was his mistake. And, 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 and you know, so I appreciate that, um, the fact that he recognized that. Um, I, I don't appreciate the fact that uh, when Councillor Trombetta and myself had reached out to him to rectify the matter, he didn't want to. Um, he uh, had his reasons and, uh, and he could speak to those. But I, I do think that this is something that didn't need to get to this point. Um, I think this was always about procedural. This wasn't so much about um, personal opinions about the organization. I think since then it became discriminatory, discriminatory. And I think that is a bigger issue, underlying issue we need to address at a different part. But that being the case, I, I don't see why we can't accept what's being proposed today because if you look at every other request we've received, um, in some situations hasn't come to council uh, and has been permitted based on the procedural aspect alone. The fact that an effort was made, it was failed, it didn't really need council. Now council's trying to rectify the situation and, and make, make a wrong right. And I think that's important to note. This was never about necessarily what was what the flag was representing. This was about what has been done before. And I can name a few. I can name Autism Ontario, for example, was one of the ones I saw circulating on uh, the um, internet there. And I also want to address the fact that I know the mayor mentioned requests have been sent previously, but even for myself, I really wasn't aware of that West Lincoln and many people weren't, did flag raisins. It wouldn't have been until, um, I can't remember what time last year, but when we did the JAC, uh, the Joint Accessibility Advisory Committee first flag raising, that was one of the first ones, <clears throat> excuse me, I was a part of. And so it, I think that was later in last year, near the end of last year when we did that. So that's why when it came by this, this time this year, it became very clear that we weren't a part of that. And so when I reached out to the um, CAO on June 1st, my question with her was, was around, it was seven o'clock at night, I sent her a text asking, um, has, you know, I haven't heard anything about Pride. Is there um, something in the works? Cause you know, it's Pride Month. How are we not supporting Pride? And, and so that that's kind of turned into finding out that we had no request on record. And then from there, um, I actually reached out to Enzo just to say, you know, more or less, um, you know, I don't know if anyone thought to reach out to West Lincoln, but maybe next year you can consider reaching out to us. And then, and the correspondence back was, oh, we actually did reach out to your mayor and uh, regional councilor, but we never heard back on, you know, more than one occasion. So that kind of started everything now. And this was only ever about correcting a simple fix. And, and, and this is what I believe we're doing today here. This shouldn't have gone to this extent. It shouldn't have created, created such division in our community. It was never about this. It was never about trying to separate um, one marginalized group from another. Like, I, I don't really want to get into what has transpired. I, I feel like we already had it just exploded based on shared views and comments on a radio show, which took it to a whole nother world that I don't think any of us had ever imagined it would. And, uh, and it was just 
I don't know, just unthinkable what happened. So anyways, that being the case, I think we need to look at today's resolution being the simple fact that this is procedural oversight. Uh, it, it's easily fixable. This doesn't, it's, you know, we're talking about putting in, you know, and I don't want to minimize this by any means, but if we look at the physical impact on our municipality, as far as the material aspects required, we're talking about putting a flag on a pole and recognizing those who don't feel accepted. Everybody wants to talk about uh, falling under one flag, but everyone doesn't feel like they belong. That's why it's so important we as a, a community make sure that that's constantly reflected which we do through age friendly advisory committee and we do um you know with you know autism ontario and i know we had one just not too long ago with crime stoppers you know we're bringing awareness to this it's not that they don't fit in under canada but they just haven't been and, and they haven't been like treated fairly or equally and i think when we hear comments like about a heterosexual flag and you know even black lives matter flag um my question is have they ever submitted a request that has been missed or ignored and that, that you know had they then that that's a situation we'd have to address very similar to how this came up okay so thank you councillor Ryan. The point about procedures where we are at, and, and that's the key of what you've had to say i see that our cao would like to weigh in i i would thank you very much deputy mayor um I, I do want to be clear about the procedure and what has happened in the past and where we sit in terms of policy and um, and quite frankly, uh, this um, whole conversation has been quite enlightening and, and really um, council makes policy, staff implements policy. And the reason why the administration does not respond to one, count, one member of council, it responds to what council makes a decision upon. So the, we do have um, two policies that re relating to flags and they're specific to flying the, flag, the township flag and when to lower it and when to put it up half mast. And we don't have an official policy that addresses requests for flag to be raised from community organizations or groups. And we've identified that as a gap. That said, we do have a precedent setting history of requests for flag raising by a group. And um, they've been handled in different ways in the past. And we're going to, I'd like to rectify that and I appreciate the motion. Um, past examples include the flag for National Accessibility Week and the age-friendly flag for seniors months. And for each of these, the township has um, related committees that um, are committees of, of, of council. And then we've also raised the flag for Crime Stoppers Awareness Month as, as um, in support of our police partners. So that, that's sort of the history, And but there is definitely a gap and we do need to have a policy and we will, staff will be providing council with a policy when we're directed to do so. Thank you, Madam CEO. Councillor Trombetta, I noticed your hand up as well. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, again, I, you, you know, I, I, we wouldn't even be having this, this meeting if this was just rectified on June 2nd. Uh, you know, the, the request was made. We, we verified on June 2nd that the request was made. There was acknowledgement of the request that was made and it was not done. We've raised flags because of age friendly, autism awareness, crime stoppers. I, I, I don't see why there is no policy on flag raising, but the flag obviously request came in to raise it. And again, it, it fell to the wayside. Um, you know, this is, this is nothing other than, than an abuse of power. This is nothing other than, than, uh, uh, okay, so uh, uh, hold on, just, my, my, just be very careful, mayor. just be very careful. I, and I'll save my comments for the second part of this this, this uh, meeting on item section 4.1. Again, you. now I, we're just looking I, at this recommendation that's before us, right? Correct. And I'm just going to say that this recommendation before us is a good recommendation brought forward by one of the councillors. And again, it took the will of council to bring this recommendation forward. And, and it shouldn't have took them 16 days to get this this right. This should have been corrected on June 2nd when when someone came and made a request. And that is the issue that I'm having with is that the request was made, it was ignored. And that is an issue on, that falls on, on, that falls on the, obviously the correspondence that came through the township. So I'm glad that this recommendation came in. I hope we're gonna be in line with the other municipalities of the Niagara region and hopefully take from their policies what they have because I see you know, the pride flag waving at many buildings at the, at, that I've driven around in the Niagara region. So I hope we can take the policies from these other municipalities and find out uh, and, and rectify our issue. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Cody. Yeah, 
I'll just, um, I have a couple quick comments that, uh, as to why I put this motion forward and, uh, and then I'll be done. And thank so, you. I actually should have asked you to speak to it first. I apologize for that. No problem. Uh, so the first thing I want to say is that it is a shame that this has gotten to this point. Um, I believe this could have been handled as quickly and without controversy as the raising of the age friendly advisory committee flag. Uh, we didn't need all of this. Uh, also, the reason I put these forward uh, is because we have seen an outpouring of support from uh, the community, but we've also seen that we, there is a vocal minority. And I just want to be clear to, to the people who would oppose this, that flying the pride flag does not in any way diminish you, your rights, or your beliefs. By flying the pride flag in West Lincoln, we're saying we acknowledge that the LGBTQ community has been discriminated against, marginalized, and abused in this country. And that while we may not all share beliefs here in this municipality, we will treat everyone, regardless of race, religion, gender, or sexuality, with kindness and respect. By us flying the pride flag in West Lincoln at Town Hall, it says you're welcome here. And that's all I'll speak to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I did see some hands go up and some hands come down. Madam CAO, I noticed you were up again. Did you want to say anything further? You're done? Okay. Mayor Bilsma. Thank you. Um, uh, often at the, at the regional level, we, uh, somebody makes a request to split a resolution and I would like to make that request at this time. Um, I, I'd like to split uh, the part four from the rest of the resolution and vote on that separately, if I could. Um, it, that's my request. Um, the other, um, uh, I've been um, called out, I suppose, of, of denying the council uh, their, their right for a special meeting. Uh, I'd like to just address that for just a second. Um, that, that decision was one that I did in consultation uh, with staff. I'm not throwing the staff under the bus in any way, shape or form, uh, but I, I do uh, have, I am privy to um, information at that level. It's just, it's just part of the CAO uh, mayoral uh, relationship. Um, and that decision, as I stated, um, so was n not mine, uh, but was done in partnership uh, with, with staff. I want people to be very careful um, making the assumption that I, I took that position by myself, that that was a sole position that was done in consultation with staff. Um, so that's, I just want to get that on the record, but I do, uh, Madam Chair, um, I do wish to uh, split the resolution uh, section four out uh, of that of the resolution. Okay, so we need to go to the clerk because I am not sure whether, as you make that pull that out of the original resolution, whether that is a separate resolution. Then, so clearly we need to know what number four was that the mayor wishes to ch have pulled out. So, since you have that in front of you, Councillor Cody, would you tell us what area that is, please? Four. Uh, I'd also like to state that if the mayor is going to make that request, I request it remain as part of the motion. So I don't know how we go about that. So the part four was that all flag raising requests outside of this motion be suspended until such time as township staff have prepared a flag raising policy and have reported back at a future council or committee meeting. Thank you. Now we all understand exactly what that is. So if that is pulled out, Madam Clerk, do we need to have a seconder for that portion to change that resolution? It's my understanding that we probably do, but. Yes, thank you, um, Acting Mayor Ganan. So a uh, section 17, se sorry, section 7.17 is division of motion. So whenever a motion under consideration consists of more than one distinct proposition then upon the request of any member the vote upon each separate proposition matter or question shall be taken separately so it is permitted and it would be a, a, diff, a new mover and seconder for item permitted but according to what you just read that means we now have to vote on all four items individually 
the two items were already as part of the resolution. So I would still consider the first part of the resolution uh, on the agenda could be voted on um, as one. So let, let's vote on that, which is the first part as originally stated. We have a mover and we have a seconder. And then let's look at the next two portions that you added, Councillor Cody, and okay. have a separate resolution that way. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep, absolutely. Okay, so we start. Oh, I have a, yes, but initially when I seconded, I, I seconded for all four, did I not? You did. So you would have to be in compliance with the request, I would guess. You're saying right now you want to split them. You want to vote for the first two as the initial well, one. Well, the first two are the the original, and we did have Councillor Riley prepared to second the first portion, the first two. Right. And I you allowed him to add the third and the fourth one without having an amendment. We didn't call it amendment because it was it has an and and a dot dot dot, which gave him the right to complete that resolution. All right. So and you don't want to vote on that as a complete package at this time, which would circumvent the mayor's request. Our mayor would like not to vote on the entire package. But right now in front of you is the entire package as second by me, correct? It's in front of the clerk. It's not in front of me personally, but it is in front of us. It's on the table for us. And the mayor has requested pulling number four and doing that separately. Well, should you not vote on that in order to determine if we have to go back and reconsider what I've already seconded? Which so, but, uh, the clerk indicated that, that we could do that. So we need to take the mayor's request and see if there's a seconder. And then if that's supported, then we can cut it up like he wishes it to be done. Otherwise it should be voted on the original that Councillor Cody and myself moved in second. Okay, so that was my original thinking and that's what I thought needed to happen. Which Point is why of order. Excuse me, please. The clerk has indicated that we are able to separate them out. So this has become a muddier issue. So I think I will, if it's acceptable, Madam Clerk, go back to the suggestion that if Mayor Bilsma wants to take number four out of a, an emotion that's on the table, that he needs to put that as an amendment and he needs a seconder to do so. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So let's, let's go back to that. Thank you, Councillor Rayner. That was my original thinking. So Mayor Bilsma would like to pull number four, which is that no further flags should be raised in West Lincoln until we have policy in place presented by staff to this council at a future meeting. Is there anybody who would like to second that motion from our mayor? Point of order. Um, that is not what is said in the procedural bylaw that the clerk read. Any the member, this, this motion has multiple parts that uh, have been added uh, after we received our agenda yeah. and a member, that's me, made a request to just separate it. it. There's no discussion. I just made a request. We can vote. So I have no problem voting on one, two, and three together okay. as a block. And <laughs> then we take up the vote. It doesn't need a seconder. And then we can vote on, um, it doesn't even need a, uh, a new mover and a seconder. It just you know, the, the originals can, can stand or they can find new ones. Uh, but uh, procedurally, the, it, it doesn't matter because it. Okay, so obviously we've not dealt with this before and I'm taking my cue from our clerk who is saying that we needed to follow the procedures. <laughs> so let's go, back, let's go back to the region. Excuse me. Well, this is not the region. I'm sure that you do it at the region. This is not the region. We've not done it here. Let's again, go to our clerk to tell us, Councillor Trombet, I see you, but I'm just going to wait for a second. I think probably our clerk is busy checking something. Councillor Rayner, as it stands, do you want to withdraw seconding the motion because we're not now looking at all four? Well, I've never heard of what the mayor just said, which is you don't need a seconder to do the original. You always have a mover and a seconder. And the original was not one, two, and three. The original was only one and two. So this whole thing is completely, uh, disjointed and it doesn't make any sense. If you want to vote on the original, you vote on one and two and you do need a seconder. That's how we work. Exactly. But when I wanted to go back and separate those, you, you were upset because you said that you had supported and seconded all four. 
Well, that's because you said uh, normally we would do an amendment, we would add it later, but in this situation, if we're gonna add it and everybody's comfortable with it, then we'll go ahead. So in which case I second it because there was no objection at that time. At that time, exactly. Now we have objection. Now so, we have objection. So we're waiting again for our clerk to tell us how to proceed. Thank you, um, Acting Mayor. Um, again, it's unclear through the procedural bylaw. It says there can be a division of motion whenever a motion under consideration consists of more than one distinct proposition then upon the request of any member, the vote upon each separate proposition, matter of question shall be taken separately. Therefore, it, it doesn't speak to the fact of which motion comes first. Um, in regards to an amendment, yes, the amendment is done first, and then the original motion is back on the table. Um, it's unclear in the procedure bylaw if this is what uh, is the same is in the, in the same manner it's done as a as a uh, an amendment. Okay, so that that complicates things even even more. Clearly. No, uh, Madam Chair, <laughs> Madam Chair, excuse me. Yes, Councillor Johnson. Um, when we have a whole pile of things read out on the agenda, let's say we're, we're reading all these minutes brought in, there are a motion that we accept these as information, as minutes and that, we can always say, um, can I pull this and we vote on it separate? That's, that's what we're doing here. Oh, same thing. It's very it's different. Not, it's actually not at all the same thing, Councillor Johnson. That would be in terms of under correspondence where, or under um, when we're looking at things that are just for no discussion, then, then we can just do that. So hands down, everybody, just for one second. And so I am going to go to our clerk one more time because she needs to control this under how this should be done. This is not at all that situation, Councillor Johnson. Councilor Johnson, I'm sorry about that. However, um, it's, not, it's not as clear as mud either. So let's... Let's go back, if my, unless the clerk says that I'm absolutely wrong, let's go back to the original motion as it stands, which is part one and two. It's been moved by Councillor Cody. It has been seconded, if not by Councillor Rayner, then Councillor Riley indicated that he was willing to do that. Are we allowed, Madam Clerk, to just go back to the original and then carry on at, with the next two motions as, as separate motions? Is that a way to rectify the situation, which is only making it all look sillier everywhere? Yes, I th um, yes, through you to acting mayor. Um, I would consider this to be a point of order, and in that case, it's an objection to the procedure or the personal. So I would say that a vote needs to be taken, and that would be your decision which way you would like to proceed. But my my suggestion would be to start with the original motion that was on the table and then bring forth the uh, additional motions three and four. Okay, so let, let's let simplify this, let's clear it up so that when, when anybody watches, they have a good understanding about what it is that we're doing. So, so I'm going to start at the very beginning again. Councillor Cody, would you please read as far as your motion where you said got down to be received and supported before adding on those additional portions, please. Yes, Thank you. Oh, by myself, Councillor Christopher Cody, which I didn't need to read, that the correspondence received by Enzo D. DeVitas, Chairperson 2020-2021 Pride Niagara Board of Directors dated June 10th, 2020, requesting that the, requesting the Township of West Lincoln to, one, raise the pride flag on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021, and two, that the Township share some time of virtual communication slash message on their social media and provide the same for Pride Niagara to share, explaining that the Township wanted to be part of the celebration of equality with Niagara's LGBTQ plus community and that there was a miscommunication and plans are in effect for next year, which would be signed on behalf of the township of West Lincoln mayor and council be received and supported. Okay, so we need someone to make, to second that motion, please. I'll go back again. Okay, thank you, Councillor Rainer. All right, so we've had lots of discussion on this. So unless somebody has something brand new that they would like to add to this, okay, Councillor Riley. So the only thing I've been trying to point out is that this is coming, and I think this is what Councillor Cody was 
trying to say earlier, this is coming to, from, to council as his motion. So it's up to him to put what he wants on the motion. So I do believe that there's this has been mishandled because it was we have to vote on his original motion. It's great that the mayor supports three quarters of his motion or whatever the situation may be. I'm just assuming. But I feel like this has just turned into an like it just made a worse situation even worse. Like Absolutely. So let's stop there. Let's deal with this and let's do it bit by bit. I'm not going to take any more comments from anyone. I'm going to call for the question. All can you just read it out one more time? Um, and that's what I, I want. Can you just read it out with, with Chris's... Uh, uh, okay, so, so, so the original motion that, that Councillor Cody has just read, as in exactly as in the one in your package that you received, that number one is to raise the pride size, the Niagara Pride, Pride Niagara flag, sorry, on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021, so next year, and that the township share some time of virtual communication slash message on their social media and provide the same for Pride Niagara, in other words, send to them, to share explaining that the township wanted to be part of the celebration of equality with Niagara's LGBTQ plus community, and that there was a miscommunication and plans are in effect for next year to to which would be signed, I think the wording's odd, on behalf of the Township of West Lincoln Mayor and Council, be received, and Councillor Cody has added, as we do many times, support it. And we'll stop there. Okay. So, I was just gonna say, this, is this not the part where we start suggesting amendments? Like, I don't feel comfortable voting on this, how it currently is without the amendments. Like, how are we bring the amendments back in after it's already been approved? I, I think amendments can, not amendments, but additional motions can come in separately with a mover and a seconder, and we can vote on those. That separates out what the mayor wishes to separate out, but it allows- so He's asking just to separate out the last one, so the, the, the third point, Council Cody, can remain. It's the last one that we're gonna vote Will on. Will I need to make two additional motions after this, or can I still include them both in the same motion? I I'm would, making another motion. So if we have another motion come from you, Councillor Cody, I would expect it could have also a part A and part B. However, that is the part that the mayor wishes to pull out. So knowing that, it would simplify things if we did them separately. Okay. So that, that is fine with me. And um, I, I'd like to use this okay. You're the mover. I would like to move it along too. If you are in agreement and our seconder is in agreement, then I think we stop here and then come forward with another resolution. But I would prefer a recorded vote on this if we could. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, recorded vote then, it's been asked for by Councillor Rayner. So Councillor Rayner, you will start first. Support. Um, I'm not sure our clerk is ready. Are you ready? Okay. Councillor Cody? Yes. Councillor Jonker? Opposed. Councillor Riley? Support. Councillor Trimbetta? Support. Not support. Acting Mayor Ganan? Support. Five to two, carried. Thank you. Okay, so now, Councillor Cody, I'm going to come back to you because obviously we all know that there was more that you wished to do. So if right. you don't mind separating out those two, that would, that would simplify this process for us. So thank Perfect. you. So then I, uh, I would like to make a motion moved by myself that the Township of West Lincoln fly the pride flag at Town Hall for the remainder of June 2020. Thank you. I will second that. Okay, Councillor Riley, I had first this time. Councillor Rayner, thank you. All right, so we've had lots of discussion. Is there anything new that somebody wishes to say? All right, so I'm going to call for that. Record Actually, Madam, Madam, Madam Council, yeah, I'm going to call for a recorded vote. Madam Councillor sure. Rayner already did, so that's good. You're, you're in agreement. So again, okay. Councillor Rayner, you're first. I support. We'll let our clerk get organized here. Councillor Cody? Support. Councillor Jonker? Opposed. Councillor, oh, sorry. We're already good. Councillor Riley? Support. Councillor Trimbetta? Support. 
Mayor Bosma? Opposed. Acting Mayor Ganan? Support. Five to two, the, the resolution carries. Okay, thank you. And now, Councillor Cody, finally. Yes, this a motion to avoid this mess again. I, Councillor Cody, move to that all flag raisings from this point forward, and I have to alter it slightly because it's no longer part of the other motion, all flag raisings from this point forward be suspended until such time as township staff have prepared a flag raising policy and have reported back at future council or committee meeting. Okay. I'd like to second that. Okay, so seconded by Mayor Bilsma. And again, we've had plenty of discussion unless there's something further that somebody wishes to add. All right, all those in favor? And any opposed? Don't see that, okay, this motion carries. Okay, so moving on to other business, which is similar business. Um, Councillor Riley, you are on this. Excellent. All right, so let me just find it here. Okay, I guess another business, uh, re Pride Niagara Communications and West Lincoln 2020 flag raising for discussion, I guess moved by myself. Okay. And Councillor Cody is seconding. All right, let me just bring up my notes here, sorry. All right, all right, so I guess I, I kind of, I, I guess a little bit, I guess crouched on this early on um, as far as how we got here today. Um, I think, unfortunately, you know, it's just definitely, um, it's had an impact on our community in a way that I don't think any of us ever imagined it would. Um, what started out to be again, um, just a, what I thought was correcting a, a, a simple error uh, turned into something much more different um, and, and just into a complete different uh, uh, world than I think I could ever imagine it going. Oh my goodness, I, I just don't know. I think to some extent uh, rattled and, and unsure is probably um, a good way of just describing like, maybe not unsure, sorry, but um, confused to how this got to where we are today. Um, I, I, you know, I, I have a little bit of statement here that I'm going to read, uh, but I think it's important to just recognize that like, I hope moving forward, it, it, we as a council can heal from this, like our community needs to. Like the thing is, um, there's definitely, um, it, this hasn't been easy on anybody, uh, not just council, but also um, staff, our community. Um, everybody's definitely been shooken up by, you know, what kind of fell out from what was going to be what I had to imagine a simple thing. Um, clearly wasn't, uh, or it should have been, but it wasn't. Um, I did, again, so I'm gonna make a statement here. Um, that I, I just want to start by saying that I'm embarrassed on behalf of our community. Uh, what was just correcting a simple error has turned into something unimaginable and unthinkable. This will likely be what people remember of West Lincoln for years to come. And that's the sad part, because this is not West Lincoln. Um, additionally, um, other things that people probably haven't realized is in, I know one of my concerns, you know, is just not just rectifying the matter and standing up for those who you know, felt that they were not being stood up for was what kind of economical impact is this going to have on our business community and our, our, our residents uh, in the future? Like, how do we, how do we grow this municipality in a way? How are we recognized as an equal partner? And this is what this is all about being recognized as equal. How are we going to be recognized as an equal partner at the region? You know what I mean? How do we act contra uh, contradictory to what everything else we've been pushing for? Like, I just don't understand. So I'm getting off my, my thing here. you, Madam Chair, I have a, I have a question. No, I'm getting off my last communication. Oh, I think no, I'm I'll still on. Second there. Councillor Jonker's uh, well, mic's on. We have a technical difficulty. Councillor Jonker, I don't know if you know if your mic's on, but you might want to mute it. Anyways, uh, so I think Dave, or Mr. Sorry, Mr. Mayor had, had already addressed it, but one of the questions I originally had was trying to seek clarity and understanding whether or not this was an honest mistake as he originally led me to believe. Um, and so before I ask that, you can say on June 1st, I reached out to the CAO. She said she'd get back to me. By June 5th, we'd re heard information from resident asking the same question I already asked on June 1st. I went and asked the clerk, or sorry, the, the CEO what the, what was happening she, at that point she informed us it was um no request had been received i know councillor i think Trimbetta might have said june 2nd i think he actually meant june 5th 
it was at that point I reached out to Enzo thinking what I've already kind of said, so I won't go too much into it, but that, you know, if you think, you know, for next year, can you reach out to us? Because I don't know if anyone thought to reach out to West Lincoln, but we would have happily been a part of it. And that was at least my viewpoint of it at the time. And, and, and still is. And so from that point, we kind of, it just didn't kind of just escalate it. And so the question, this is why the question is relevant now. And so I do want to ask the mayor for the record, if this did remain, like if this was such an honest mistake, why have you been, so through you, Madam Chair, to the, uh, to the mayor, if this was such an honest mistake, it is oversight, whatever, why are you resisting this? This is what it feels like to me. This is what I think it feels like to our community. Why didn't you try to rectify the matter? I know you mentioned concern for staff, but clearly you must identify up until 1059 today, you could have raised that pride flag. There's no reason this had to come to this. So if you won't mind, and it's right not to comment if you don't want to. I have a couple of questions for you and a couple of questions for staff. But my question right now to you, Mr. Mayor, is what's with resistance here? Like, I don't understand if this was a simple mistake, why it grew out to this. Madam Chair, yes. What what are we doing here? Like, uh, so, so, so uh, like, um, I don't know what this part of a meeting is. is. It, like, okay. um, I, I'm not on trial. I, I know I'm asking a question, and I might get to it, but I, I want to understand what what part of a meeting, a public council meeting, this is falling under. Like, is there a resolution here? or it, it, this is, seems more than just an update. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not resisting, but I'm also very uncomfortable with this portion because I think, I think it could be more, despite the councillor's intentions to try to heal, I think this could exacerbate the situation. So I'm just, I wanna, I, I wanna know uh, what, what's happening right now because we passed a resolution. We have. And, yeah. and this, this, I actually feel like this part of the discussion was added under other business. That was one of the things that, that Councillor Riley, I understand, wanted to have this meeting for. Um, and that was why I started my beginning rem remarks with saying, like, this is not an opportunity to nitpick at each other. I think the, the sincere question was just simply um, should have been th th what Councillor Riley, I think, was trying to get at, if I could paraphrase what he said, is just, I think at the beginning of all of this, people felt that very, very much that this could have been through COVID an error. And, and now suddenly even today, which is my, my guess why Councillor Riley is even asking this, even after we rectified it by voting, you did not support that. So I think his question is probably more trying to point out the inconsistency here between between what, what you have said in terms of, of wanting to see healing as well in our community and yet still not accepting responsibility for it growing. It, 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 the, question's, the question's valid and fair. I don't know that that, that part of any, like we were, uh, I, I'd like to just, I'd like to just go to, uh, like, so I said, I said what I said earlier. I found out um, that this indeed, it's it's totally believable in the sense that it happened seven times previously. Um, that that uh, communications come to this town, and I, I guess you would have to cast aspersions uh, against uh, previous uh, councils um, for for not picking it up as well. I mean, we um, this whole council here together um, didn't. Uh, pick it up last year in June. Um, and, and, and again, so ha having said that, I still have an opportunity as, an, as a member of this council to uh, express and vote on the way that I, I, I see things. And uh, again, I, I'm just very uncomfortable. Um, I, not that you know, like um, I'm, I'm not on trial here. I, I, I said that it was an oversight. I apologized for that oversight, and and I have a view, uh, and, and and those two need to be seen as 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 separate. So let's uh, so Madam Chair, if I could steer like I'll steer again, go back to that yeah. first question. What are we doing? What what's the purpose of this item for? I'm trying to get an understanding of what happened, to tell you the truth. That's what the whole point of the conversation, that's why it's a discussion. 
And so if you want, Mr. Mayor, I don't, I don't, I won't need, I don't need to continue on with my questions with you, but through you, Madam Chair, to the CAO, Ma Mr. Mayor made comments earlier related to Pride Niagara as well, the fact that you guys had conversations that his opinion is not only his opinion, but his opinion is reflective of the decision of, of the township. And that means you guys had a conversation. So my question to you, Madam Chair, to the CAO is, was this discussed about before June 5th? Because that's what I was under the impression that the town didn't even know about it. And if you have already made a position before June 5th, that means that's not true. No, I, I would like to step in there simply because the comment made about the CAO and the mayor had to do with this calling a special council meeting, not deciding whether to fly a flag or not fly a flag. Or That anything. wasn't very clear to me. Okay, well, that, that well, is I what... Feel, what point order, point order, I feel that that is question should still be answered by the CAO. Well, and fair enough, I will go to that. But I'm just saying to you, the discussion that, that came out of this today was from, from our mayor's mouth saying that he had had discussion about whether or not to have this council meeting. And I regret yeah, that, it's, that part. I regret that it's come to this. But Madam CAO, do you wish to weigh in on this? Absolutely, thank you very much to you, um, Acting Chair, to Councillor Riley. So you asked me questions about pride flag and I told you I'd get back to you. I, I hadn't had any direction to, or had any request to raise the pride flag. And um, then when we had the, the um, information from um, the chair of Pride Niagara that we had had a request, I immediately rectified that with the chair to advise about the proper protocol for approaching council. And that was done immediately. And then we had that put and we were working on a process to put it on the, the one and only council meeting we were having in June. I do not take the direction of the mayor directly or any member of council directly. I take the recommendation from council. That is how our roles and responsibilities are laid out. And though those are the processes, then there was a discussion about whether or not we should be having a special meeting. Right now, as I think you're realizing that, and I've been telling you, we have been working in a, a modified business method since we've been in COVID. And running a meeting is, is being exceptionally challenging for um, the staff, but we accommodated it and I provided a date and a time to do it. So the mayor could have called it or the, the request came through the um, member of council to secure a special meeting and we are holding that meeting and dealing with the matter. And that's all. Thank you. Councillor Riley. So, so I'm understanding that correctly that so there's nothing you could have done to put the flag on the flagpole yourself is what I'm understanding. So before you answer, uh, you know, our municipality, you have the, the ability of spending upwards of what, $125,000 with council approval, but you don't have the authority to put a flag on a flagpole? I, I don't believe council would want me to start to fly flags that I think are appropriate. You want me to fly flags that council has made a policy de decision on. I don't agree with that, but I'll let someone else speak. Councillor Trombetta, I saw your hand. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. This is the section for us, this section under here, just for clarification, if somebody else wants to go first. This is a section, and I know we've confirmed this with the clerk, for us to address, to, to address all the communications that has transpired uh, leading up to this point. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I'm, I'm quite sure the residents, the municipality, and staff, and of people that came to present want to hear our comments and how 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 our comments are going to get relayed to the township of West Lincoln. You know, uh, this is our opportunity to discuss our comments, just like all the uh, the people that put an email in. We're, we're citizens here, so we're able to really to give our comments to to uh, the public because the public wants to hear from us. I, I don't want to be be without giving my comments to the public at this portion of the meeting. I don't want to be painted with the same brush for the for the mayor's view. So this is the opportunity for any member of council under this other business to state their comments and how they want to be put for the record, which the municipality is looking at us to give some comments and some reflection on this matter. So if anybody else wants to go first, I will be coming back. I've written a statement down that I'd like read into the record, and I would like that heard. So if the mayor needs some clarification, this is the, the area that we can deal with communications, which is under the an item on the agenda which we're allowed to deal with. All communications leading up to this point. Thank you, Ms. De Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Okay. So, Councillor Cody, I thought I saw your hand earlier too. Did you want to weigh in on this discussion right now? No? 
you know, my hand is up and I'll be I would eventually like to get Okay, so we have everybody holding off for another time. Okay. Well then, I, I think this is the time to talk, guys. Anybody wants to talk? You, what are you waiting for? This is the time. However, I will caution you: it is not the time to be nasty or or disrespectful to anyone else. If you do not like the way this has rolled out, if you do not like the fact that council has appeared to be made that the victim of having made a bad decision in light of what many people are thinking. This is the time to, to do that in a factual, firm manner without being disrespectful to each other. So I don't care who goes first, but if you don't go first, I'm going to go and then I'm going to adjourn the meeting. So this is your opportunity. I'll go. Okay, please do. Thank you. Councillor Rayner. Um, there was a couple of things that, that bothered me with the background on all this. Um, <clears throat> number one, <clears throat> the situation where apparently there was lack of communications over a period of time and uh, this information that that we got from from Enzo um, got sidelined for some reason it didn't go through the proper procedures it would have went to the clerk it would have been handled in due course which is a normal way um, <clears throat> I was then approached uh, to, to partake in this special counsel and um, basically the 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 reason being that we wanted to get this situation addressed in the best interest of the township, the best interest of the people of this township. Um, what happened after that was it kind of took off a little bit. Um, I was not prepared that members of the public would be reading into this for the, for the last hour and a half that we had. Uh, certainly their input is important, but in this particular uh, meeting, this was a special council meeting called because of a situation that we needed to rectify internally and put a position out to the public with regards to where the township of West Lincoln stands. And that can only be done if all members of council were duly informed of what they have to discuss, which we were not in the past. And that's why this situation blew up to where it was today. Because of that, um, we ended up uh, then with a tweet that came out later and it said, we respect the value of every member of our township. Well, that's not what the petition against the mayor was. Um, the mayor's view as voted today with the, with the uh, recorded vote was different or consistent, I should say, with what he had in the past, which is not the direction that the township wished to go in. Um, as elected officials, um, we represent the taxpayers of this township. We have to be duly informed, and that's the mayor's responsibility and the CAO's responsibility in order for us to perform our functions. We don't have to agree with it. The mayor has a perfect right not to agree with it. Councillor Yonker has a perfect right not to agree with it. That's what the purpose of the recorded vote. But it has to be done in a democratic process, in which case all members of council are informed of the information and then all members of council are free to vote. That was taken away from us. So that part of the first part of that tweet did not make sense to me. We respect and value members of council. That, that did not follow what was happening there. So this tweet didn't make sense to me. Um, and then it said, um, uh, it said on Tuesday to discuss the Pride Month recognition. Was like we want to hear your thoughts. Well, I don't know. I I believe the 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 CAO put this together, uh, this tweet. Um, well, right now the thoughts is what we wanted to hear was to get it to to the members of council, so that we can discuss what our thoughts are, uh, as the people who represent the taxpayers, and when that's what we're elected to do. So it kind of took a twist. And then it took another twist today when the mayor said quite clearly that his decision, this was not just his decision to hold back and not inform other members of council. It was staff's position. So now I'm really upset with this, not knowing that we, we, we have a situation here where we have staff that are now intentionally withholding information from members of council supported by the mayor. No, so that doesn't sound right to me. That, 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 that needs to stand on the record as being corrected. So I'm going to go to our Madam CAO to just clarify what that point was, or to the mayor. I yeah, can't I, I wouldn't it. agree with that. I don't think that's uh, that was my my point even close. Yeah. Uh, well, why would both parties, if I may say, uh, Madam uh, Co-Chair, um, if 
why would staff and the mayor together want to keep the information from members of council? Like th th this totally goes against- so Councilor, Councilor Rayner, even the mayor and the CAO have both indicated, and I have already mentioned, that it was the decision made jointly that perhaps we did not need a special council meeting, not a decision about earlier whether or not to fly uh, this flag. So it wasn't, it wasn't the information that was kept from us that said, that said this information that this request has come, it was information about not having a special council meeting. So, so that's a little different. So I'm going to go to the CAO. Thank you again. I'm going to clarify um, that since we've been in COVID, we are running one council meeting a month. And we are trying to deal with all the business that is 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 um, high priority enough because we are not in running in a current business state as, or as we normally do. We are we're running in under sort of COVID circumstances. The, the building isn't open. We're doing meetings by Zoom, which is challenging enough. So if there was any discussion, we were just chatting about whether or not another meeting was was um, would, would be easy to do. Figured out a time and, and the mayor and the clerk and I talk about times, I figured out a time, presented that to the mayor. Then council came up with an I, the, um, the, we figured out the majority of council created a special meeting and we are holding the special meeting. There's nothing being held back. In terms of the tweet that went out, one of the things that we would normally do in a council meeting is, is allow the public to speak to specific items. Because we're on Zoom and we are not holding an open Zoom forum, we invited people to, to make comments and to share their comments so that they were heard as this debate was proceeding. That is all. Thank you. Councillor Trombetta. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. I have some comments, like I said, this is the section where I'm gonna address the communications that came up to this point that it was made and it was sort of to, to like I said, to, to, I, I, I don't wanna be painted with the same brush for the comments that were in the public um, so I, I got a bit of things written down, so please uh, bear with me, Deputy Mayor. Um, you know, this again, this could have been avoided. Uh, the, the, obviously, uh, we had uh, the mayor decide to go on the radio and uh, say some comments that don't reflect me, and they don't reflect West Lincoln. Uh, all the mayors that came before him have put such pride into this municipality put West Lincoln on the map. And I feel that they've done such good work on what a beautiful community this is to come to and, and live, live in. I know that for a fact because, again, my mother... ...and known, which is his right, but which is, not, which is his right to do, but I, I, I don't agree with his beliefs and what he said on the radio at all. Um, that's not what West Lincoln stands for, and that's not what I stand for. Uh, I'm quite disgusted on the comments. I've lived in this community for 41 years. I've been around all ethnic groups. I played soccer in this community. I used to play for West Lincoln Regional Soccer was on the team. And I had many, many ethnic groups on my team who, uh, with even on the Christian faith. And they don't think that way. So that is one thing that the mayor stands alone on. Um, his disregard for all types of people is hurtful and appalling. He came to us with a written apology, which I think is, is, is ludicrous and it's not enough. He sends a generic email out through staff and everybody. He didn't have the audacity to call me. I don't know if he had the audacity to call any members of council and state why he, uh, what, why he, why he made his comments. He had, no, he had total disregard to call me and say, you know, hey man, I made some comments. I just want you to be there and defend his actions. So that, for once, uh, as a, I feel that he, he's on an island for himself. Um, and I will say, this, he is not the boss, he is not my boss, and I don't work for him. And that's what I wanna make clear clear right off the bat. And, and that's what I think is he's, he's uh, 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 thinking at these times. I would like a public apology. I find that an email correspondence that he got written for himself, because I know he didn't write that. I, I would like a public apology, I think to all media outlets that this community needs. And until he does that public apology, because he has his right to apologize and defend his actions. I deserve that all media outlets are, 
are they, are they are available to see his public apology. And until he does that, I, I would suggest he resigns as mayor because I, I, I don't think that I want him representing me. I think he's entitled to his views, but I don't want those who are not my views. And I don't, I don't stand for that, and nor does West Lincoln stand for that. So until he gives a public apology, Matt, Deputy uh, Mayor, I, and if he does, refuses to do so, I, I believe he should stand down. Thank you. Those are my comments for the record. And uh, I'll let any, open that up to any other members of uh, council. Thank you, Jennifer. Ma Madam Chair, um, I, I seriously objecting to the uh, this section. I'm going to call this section completely out of order. Completely out of order. It, you, you, I'm just, I'm gonna, Madam Chair. Excuse me. Madam Chair, I'm. I, I, I'm going to call this section completely out of order. Um, I will be uh, reviewing this section um, with the integrity commissioner because I think it's completely not appropriate to even have this type of discussion um, in this format. This is a council meeting. I, I, I can appreciate the councillor's view. And he, you know, he could have he could have called me at any point too. And, and we he knows he knows my number. We have had countless uh, conversations and uh, I've received them all as as have I with all members of this council every single member of this council I've had open and honest discussions with I have never turned anyone aside or ignored them but this is turning into something that is very inappropriate and I want to register a complaint if you let it continue that's fine and your your call as a chair but I'm going to go on record at this time and say this is uh, out of order, completely out of order, not the place. And there are ways and means that people can express their views about my opinion. And, and, and but this is not it. So I, I, I'm, you can proceed, but know for certain that this section will be reviewed by an integrity commissioner. And I just want to get the on record right now. Thank you. I want. I also want to put on the record that I did ask our clerk if it came to this point where we would be in terms of needing to go into confidential. So, so there is an awareness. So this was to be an opportunity to discuss how people feel about how things have been treated. So I think that, that we've done that. I, I had uh, some further comments that I wanted to make. I see Councillor Cody um, we did not give you a chance to weigh in. You said you would come in later. I would like to allow you to do that. And then I'm going to make my comments because I think everybody else has said what they want to say. And, um, and that's fine. So, it, I, and again, I've expressed many times, this is not meant to be a crucifixion of anyone. I think that, that um, the divide in our community has been great. The divide among us is great and we need to start healing. Councillor Cody, last time. Yes. Um, well, I'll start by saying I don't understand how the mayor would think this was inappropriate. Um, we are speaking to comments that he went on a public radio show as the mayor of West Lincoln to address an issue that was currently going on within our township and spoke for half an hour. How any of that is not a matter for this town or for this council he did not go on the radio as the citizen Dave Bilsma, as the business owner Dave Bilsma, as the as the uh, a, a member of his church Dave Bilsma. He went on the radio as Mayor Dave Bilsma of West Lincoln, and proceeded to make all the comments that he proceeded to make. So when he did that, he spoke as the representative of this township. So I have no idea how he could think it would not be appropriate for us to speak to how our top representative portrayed himself, this council, and the people in this township. To avoid being repetitive, I would just like to say that I am as equally embarrassed and outraged as Councillor Trombetta. I share all the feelings that Councillor Trombetta feels. The mayor does not speak for me or anyone within this community whom I know. And I would like to also share in Councillor's and Councillor Trombetta's uh, feelings that uh, I will find it very difficult from this point forward to work with the mayor in any capacity. I think that it'll be very difficult for this township to move forward 
with the mayor in any capacity. And I too uh, would prefer he resign for the benefit of the municipality. Okay, so Councilor Riley, I, since you started this and this is your agenda item. This is my last time commenting. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if anyone else has something to say. No. Um, I guess, I guess just try to sum it up. I gotta, if it wasn't clear, in no way did I find the mayor's comments to be um, acceptable or appropriate. Uh, but as the mayor has indicated, he wants to you know, potentially have this reviewed by the Integrity Commissioner. And I think this council needs to consider having the Integrity Commissioner review him and his comments that he made when I think he, you know, it's immeasurable to understand what damage is possibly has happened to the corporation itself. And I think he needs to be held accountable. That's what we're hearing all across even in our election before this even broke out is how people want more transparent and more accountable elected officials. And I don't understand um, how we got to this point, but here we are. And so I just want to make it known for the record that I do not, he does not represent me and it's going to be very hard. I've mentioned this before. How do we move forward as a council? Never mind. How do we move forward as a community? And I don't, I honestly like, and maybe it's just me, but I still, I still hold a staff accountable. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like they had an opportunity to at least, at least try to figure another alternative if they felt that what was happening. I understand COVID's complicated lives and because there's everything in between we're having to make do. But this to me, the damage that this has caused, like the image of our community is this isn't just local anymore. Like this is across the province, it's not across the nation. And, and so that being the case, like I don't understand how something more couldn't have been done. And that's what I want to get to the bottom of. And I, and I, I I'll, I know I was asking the mayor comments because I was hoping to kind of get a better understanding of where his headspace was because it originally came to us as a mistake that changed. Um, I think that changed. If I'm understanding correctly, it's been a very confusing meeting. I think for all of us, um, I definitely got to be reviewing it myself to kind of figure out where maybe I might have missed some things or you know what I could have said better. Uh, but that being the case, I don't. I, he doesn't. Ref, his comments do not ref, reflect mine whatsoever. I don't believe they were exact, uh, re accurately represent majority of our community. And it's hard not to support what the you know the four thousand petition people that are trying to get him out of office. I know that doesn't mean anything in the end. And, I, I'll, okay, I'll finish here. I'll echo with what Councillor Cody and Councillor Trumbetta has, has said so far is it's going to be hard moving forward with them, and I, I, need, I need something more, or he needs to resign. Okay, so here, I'm going to have the last word on this as, a, as chair. Sorry, Councillor Rayner, I'm done. So there have been a lot of things read, a lot of things that people have said. There's been a lot of excellent articles written uh, about the situation and a lot of wonderful letters from our, our residents. Um, but I've been doing a lot of reading as well, and I came across this, and this is my closing comment on this. We are not alone in dealing with such matters as are before us this morning, now this afternoon. I just read an article in the latest edition of the ICMA, which is the International City Management Association publication, that spells out how civic leaders in 2020 should react to issues so as to work on civic healing to assure resilient communities. And there are four simple actions. They're simple, they're straightforward. One, a rapid apology for failure. Two, support of empathy. Three, transparency. Four, justice in operational reviews and investigation of wrongdoing. So those four steps sound quite simple, but most certainly require the removal of all personal biases on any given subject in order to make the best choices for assuming that communities move forward together in a fair, equitable manner. So this is 2020 and we are collectively the civic leaders. Not facing this issue sooner has only given birth to a wider divide in our community. I think that we need to heed the advice on civic healing to jumpstart the healing process in our own community. I think that we need to have listened to all sides of what people had to say. And we need to truly all become better educated and make good collective decisions for the best of our community. We have been elected to be here until 2022, and we need to find a way to work together until 2022. And then whatever happens in the next election going forward is up to the people who live in this community. So I'm going to say that this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for taking part. Thank you for putting your heart and your feelings into what you wanted to say. Thank you for Taking time to think okay, about yeah, it. Mr. Yonker had some comments he would like to say. Like, I'm like, why are people not being able to speak? It's a democratic process. I'd like to see he the did, comments. But, of uh, uh, he did not indicate through this process that he was looking to speak. And I, I did not come back to him. But during this.
to say. Which I feel bad for. He didn't get a chance to speak. That's why. Well, he, he chose not to speak before, and I think his silence is perhaps... And Council Rayner had his hand up as well, so... Well, I know, but you also know how this has gone on and on, and Councillor Rayner did express his opinion at the beginning of this section. He has had a term. Everybody has had an opportunity. Not Councillor Jonker, but I did not see him indicate that he wished to. Sorry, I saw that. I think he should speak, or if anybody wants to. You can, you're you still a Deputy Mayor. You can still control the meeting as you progress, uh, and which you're doing a fantastic job, and I thank you for doing that, uh, Deputy Mayor, and coming in at last minute to... Uh, to do this meeting, you've done a fantastic job. So I would like to see that you continue to do that. With Councilor Jonker, I feel bad that he didn't get a chance to speak. Okay, well, he does have his hand up now, so thank you. Okay. Yes, I'd just like to um, say that, uh, yeah, it is pretty sad what's happening in the community, but I think we've listened to a lot of people voice their support of the mayor as well. So we need to take that into consideration. And I agree with uh, the last comments that were gonna be made by uh, the chair that we will have an election in, what year is it again? I forget, but we will have an election coming up in the future and they will be able to speak there as well again. And um, yes, I don't agree with the decisions that we made today, but we are called as council to accept the decisions that are made. And I, I, I am sad to say that I will accept it. I was hoping things would be different, but that it is what it is. And also, um, oh, there was one more other thing I was going to say, but uh, I forgot. But no, I, 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 I remember now. Um, I do want to thank staff. What we have to remember is a lot of things have been made a mess by COVID-19. I'm in the trucking business, and we have customers that are scrambling constantly to stay on board, to stay on top of what is right, what we can do, what we can't do. I, I know that staff is busy. I know that it's hard to stay on top of things when you are at home trying to, to um, run a business and run a corporation and, and they have staff at home. It is not the norm. When you have staff in, in, in the office together, you can talk a lot easier. You could communicate a lot easier. Emails, Zoom meetings are not even as good as face-to-face. -face. We all know that. So I just want everybody to realize that COVID is not an excuse. It is affecting every single business. I go to a customer where it normally takes me 15 minutes to go in and out of their place. It now takes an hour and a half by the time you get figured out where you got to go, who you can call who answers the phone, who answers, it is a mess. So please be patient with staff. They're doing the best they can. And I also want to just say to staff, thanks for getting this meeting put together. I wasn't in support of calling this meeting, but thank you for getting this together. Thank you, Joanne, for reading for that long. I'm impressed. I imagine you're going to need a lot of water. That was my problem earlier. I'm just thankful the meeting's over and everybody enjoy the sunshine. I know one thing, I'm not going to go back to work today. I'm going to go out to my field and hey, do some bailing now that's hopefully dry. So yes, thank you staff. And thanks everybody for being here and to partaking in this meeting. And, and sure, uh, Ganan, thanks for uh, sharing this meeting on short notice. Cheryl, um, I don't know if you, I don't know if I missed this. I'm just, I just want to ask Larry too. With the flag raising, um, was is do we know when that's actually going to happen? Is that just going to go up today, tomorrow? Um, I don't know if I missed that part. I don't think that was decided. The decision was that it should go up right away, but Madam CAO. Thank you. Um, I don't um, have immediate plans. The, the decision was just made, and uh, we will get the flag up as soon as we possibly can. Will council be notified? Of course. Thank you. All right, I think then that was a good way to end. Councillor Jonker, thank you for those comments. Thank you, staff, for putting this meeting together. Thank you all for taking part. Um, we'll move onward and upward. Thanks so much. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. No gavel.